I'm calling to order this meeting of the Arlington Select Board on Wednesday, February the 21st, 2024. I am Select Board Chair Eric Helmuth. I will now confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me, uh, particularly the people who are remote. But I'll start with uh, members. When I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. This will also serve as a sound check for our remote members. Diane Mahan. Affirmative. John Hurd. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Steve DeCourcy. Here. Len Diggins. You are loud and clear, Mr. Chair. Thank you, sir. Staff, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Town Manager Jim Feeney. Here. Um, and has Town Council Attorney uh, Mike Cunningham joined us yet? Okay, so uh, he'll join us when he's able. Select Board Administrator Ashley Marr. Here. Okay, and I think that's everybody we need to do a, a, a AV check for. So, um, as you can see, tonight's meeting is being conducted in a hybrid con format consistent with Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023, signed into law on March 29th, 2023, which further extends served certain COVID-19 measures regarding remote participation in public meetings until March 31st, 2025. Before we begin, please note the following. First, this meeting is being conducted in the Select Board Chambers and over Zoom. It is being recorded and simultaneously broadcasted on ACMI. Second, people wishing to join the meeting by Zoom may find information on how to do so on the town's website. If you're participating by Zoom, uh, you may be visible to others. If you wish to participate, we ask you to provide your full name in the interest of developing a record of the meeting. Same thing goes for people here in the room. Third, all participants are advised that pe people may be listening who do not provide comment, and those persons are not asked to identify themselves. Both Zoom participants and persons watching on ACMI can follow the posted agenda materials found on the town's website, specifically the Select Board Agendas and Minutes page. And finally, uh, because one or more Select Board members are participating remotely, and tonight that is two members, each vote tonight will be taken by roll call in accordance <coughs> with statute. So let's see how much of the town's business we can get done tonight. A couple of notes for public uh, comment and also a note on the hybrid nature of the meeting. As always, uh, if we have problems with remote members or remote participants um, experiencing a disconnection, we will first attempt and allow some time to reconnect and hope that that happens. If after um, a sufficient number of attempts we can't do that, provided that we still have a quorum of the select board, which is the three members, we'll proceed with business um, as usual. Regarding public comment this evening, uh, because we are entering into our season of warrant article hearings, it's a long-standing tradition and practice of the board, and I think a wise one, that we reserve public comment for the warrant article hearings and any other legally mandated hearings, but we typically omit the open forum portion of the meetings during this season, and that's simply so that we can give the other public hearings, particularly the warrant articles, that the intention that they deserve. Um, if we have items where there will be public comment, I will announce those uh, before the agenda, or before when we get to that agenda item. And if you are on Zoom and you wish to comment at that time, you'll raise, I'll ask you to raise your hand in Zoom. If you're in the room, obviously you'll raise your hand here. If you do not know how to raise your hand in Zoom, now would be an excellent time to search for how to do that. I'd like to begin this meeting uh, with some very, an observation of some very sad news. A former town clerk, uh, Corinne Rainville, who served Arlington for 16 years, passed away last week. She died tragically in a house fire of her daughter up in Vermont. And I want to, on behalf of the board and the town, express our deepest condolences to her family. And um, I would invite board members to make any comments, after which we'll observe a moment of silence in Ms. Rainville's memory. And Mrs. Mahan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, um, and thank you for doing that. Um, as you said, we, we lost her tragically. Um, so many people devastated um, with Mrs. Rainville, Kern's passing. Um, a lot of people still in town hall had the opportunity to work with her, and she's someone that Arlington born, uh, started as a principal clerk, worked her way up. She was the assistant town clerk for many years for my husband's aunt, Ann Mahan Powers. So she had some really great training, and as you mentioned, <clears throat> she served in that for 16 years, and then she came back and filled in as an interim, I think, in 2019 um, for several months um, uh, uh, during that transition, and again demonstrating her uh, commitment to the town of Arlington, which was her second family. Her first family, of course, um, 
were, were her children, her two daughters, Carrie and Kristen. Um, she talked about them all the time. And Corinne was really a very quiet, unassuming woman. However, uh, when she was in her element and, and working down at the town clerk's office and, and conducting the business of Arlington through the town clerk's office, um, she was uh, top of the mark in terms of uh, not only the knowledge that she has had, um, but also one of the just as uh, balance of the job of town clerk is um, dealing with the public department heads, uh, municipal officials, and sometimes state officials. And I know you will not find one person that won't have anything but to say glowing and, and extremely positive remarks about any interaction with Corinne. Um, so, so sad to hear uh, of her passing. Um, I know different people have on Facebook pages and others, there's a GoFundMe account um, for her daughters. Um, I know I will miss her. Uh, I, I still kept in touch with her now and then. She still said to me, Diane, you're one of the funniest people I know, which I don't know if I was, but <clears throat> she was kind enough to say that. And I'm really, really gonna miss her along with so many other people. And uh, Godspeed, Corinne. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mrs. Mohan. Mr. Mc uh, Mr. DeCourcy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I also wanna express my condolences to Corinne's family and I, I knew Corinne, when I first became a town meeting member, she was a clerk and um, it, it got to know her through her years at, uh, at various meetings and, and, and a town meeting and I'm uh, very sorry about the loss. Thank you, sir. Um, if any of my colleagues over Zoom want to make comments, please just uh, jump in. Thank you both very much. I think, uh, as, I, as I said now, I'd like to invite everyone to pause for a moment and um, observe a moment of silence and gratitude for Corinne's life and to express our thoughts and prayers to her family. Thank you very much. This evening, uh, because one of our members is uh, on family vacation out of state, that is Mr. Hurd, um, and he, over and above the call of duty, uh, joined the meeting tonight for one specific item that he is involved with. Um, and so I'm going to take that item out of order and take that and do that now. And that is item 10, uh, battle reenactment plans. This uh, is, uh, and we'll invite uh, Deputy Town Manager Christine Bongiorno and our Economic Development Coordinator Katie Lucide to come uh, speak with us. And uh, I'll note that Mr. Hurd then will make some remarks afterwards. He is, of course, uh, the select, select board chair to the Arlington 250 community, uh, committee, and the connection of that will become very clear uh, momentarily. Uh, Ms. Bongiorno. Great, thank you so much for this opportunity. Um, as you mentioned, I'm Christine Bongiorno, the Deputy Town Manager of Operations, and I have here Katie Lucai, our Economic Development Director here in town. Um, as you know, the 250th anniversary of the American Revolution is coming up. It's next year. Um, the board has established a committee. John uh, Hurd and Angela Olszewski are the two co-chairs. So a significant amount of work has been done to date to plan for next year's um, events that are happening. Arlington is a member of a, a four community process. We're basically joining forces with Lexington, Concord, and Lincoln. And we're um, partnering to make sure that our events and our um, the, the different things that are happening that weekend are all coordinated. And so we're using this year, this April, as a dress rehearsal. All four communities are using this year as a dress rehearsal for next year. Um, one of our big um, areas that we are, are planning for is a battle reenactment. And so our team, uh, our, our committee, has been working uh, closely with a, a group of battle reenactors um, to make this happen. So the battle reenactment will be taking place on Sunday, April 14th. And we're here tonight to just ask for your conditional approval to move this forward. Um, our team has been meeting, our emergency planning team, which includes the fire, police, DPW, has been meeting um, to look at the logistics of the plan that's been proposed. Um, and we're working closely with the battle reenactors um, to just make sure that we're looking at all of the different safety, you know, safety concerns that, that we're, we're able to appropriately staff and um, move people in and out of the community. Um, so I, I ask for conditional approval to close Mass Ave from Grove Street, Grove Prentice Street, 
all the way to Medford Street um, while we work through the logistics um, with our planning, our emergency planning partners. Um, I will just mention that um, Arlington isn't alone, as I mentioned before. We are working closely with Lexington, Concord, and Lincoln. Um, we do have partners in those communities that are doing the same um, in, in looking at making sure we're evaluating all um, safety concerns and making sure that we're appropriately um, staffing our, our communities. Um, I think, you know, at this point, I'd love to hear from John if he has anything else he would like to add. Um, yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, and let me just, um, I didn't write down, I'm sorry, the date again? It's Sunday, April 14th. Okay. April and the closure 14th. will happen. Um, we are looking tentatively, again, this is a conditional approval, um, based on the need for us to really continue to work through the logistics um, with our police fire and with the Valerie mm -hmm. Actor group. Um, the uh, closure would happen from 12 noon until 5 p.m. Okay. All right, so the, so the request is a conditional approval of a closure of Mass Ave from Grove and Prentice to Medford, uh, conditioned up, upon further um, uh, work from the town officials, Sunday, April the 14th and 12 to 5. Okay, uh, anything else from you before I turn to Mr. Hurd? Uh, I'll just also add, um, in addition to just our local public safety officials, um, we've also been working with MEMA and the Boston Athletic Association, as well as FEMA, um, so there's a lot of different parties that have been working regionally just to make sure that this is really going to be a very safe event, since this will be really one of the first major public events uh, since the pandemic. Excellent. Thanks very much. Uh, Mr. Hurd. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. I just want to thank um, Christine and Katie for all the work they've been doing on this. It's really been a long process to, try to get us to this point and town staff has really gone above and beyond the, the call of duty to really put this together. It's an event like we haven't experienced in Arlington before. And I think it will be a really great event for our, for our residents and tourists. Um, I'd like to move approval. And again, we're just asking for the, for the outside parameters of what the event could be. And we're gonna work with town officials and public safety officials to make sure that this event is, is safe and um, within, within the bounds of, of what, uh, what works for the town. So I, I would like to move approval. And again, thank everyone for all their work on this, on this event. Thank you very much, Mr. Hurd. I will now turn to my colleagues for any uh, a second and uh, potentially and any discussion. Mr. DeCourcy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I'll, I'll second Mr. Hurd's motion. I just want to clarify. I heard you say approval, Mr. Hurd, and, and Ms. Bongiorno had asked for a um, conditional approval. I know this thing's to be worked out just for purposes of the of the vote. Is that is, is that what your intention was? Or I, I just want to make sure I'm seconding the right motion. Yes, yeah, so, so a conditional approval of, like I said, the outside parameters. But I think the board really needs to approve is the shut down the street from Grove Street to Medford Street, subject to the uh, approval of working with town officials to make sure that the event is safe and, and within the bonds of what is approved by the town staff. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, happy to support it, and, and thank you all for the work that you've been doing on this uh, in advance of April 14th. Excellent. Mrs. Mahan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you to all the hard work that's gone into this, and there's still a lot more that I know <laughs> many, many hours to coordinate something like this, uh, even though it is sort of a prep for next year, it still is a, a big major event. And I just want to make sure I'm correct in my understanding. We're not talking about the parade. We're talking about a battle reenactment. Correct. And, um, and I understand Lexington Concord, and I don't know if another community is doing it, but when they um, have the reenactors, is it going to be a spot in each community, or is it going to start in one community and go down, go down past foot of the rocks? And then the other thing I would ask just to put in, um, if it can't be done, that's fine. It may already be being discussed. Um, if, 
if Lansom Way was somehow incorporated into that, because I think that was something um, that I really didn't know a lot about uh, until the uh, town organizers and um, Andrew Lozuski may also have been involved in that. So if you could just maybe just clarify a little bit, it's not a parade, it's a reenactment, is it continuous, something like that. I'm happy to, to uh, respond. Yeah, and Lamson, thank you for bringing up the Lamson Way. Um, I think that's a really big part of our history that, that needs to be addressed as well, so thank you. Um, so Lexington, Concord, and Lincoln, we, we have decided to um, break down the weekend, and each community will have its own day. So Arlington's day is Sunday. We're doing many events that weekend. The battle reenactment just happens to fall on that Sunday, and that's the day that um, God bless you. Um, Arlington will will run so so each day there will be a battle reenactment in each community yes this uh lexington and concord have their reenactments on saturday those are happening in the morning separately there will be no movement between those and then their parades are both happening much later in the day in the afternoon so they're really separating out their events and arlington is going to have our reenactment on sunday and then lincoln traditionally has their festivities on that monday okay and then just from my days gone by with organizing parades yes, and reenactments, <laughs> um, only because I know what I went through with growing pains. Um, just about everybody in Arlington expects that around the Jason Russell House, there'll be musket firing and firings and things like that. And I understand from going through the packet that you provided us all of the, just the initial plans um, that the three communities are still discussing about um, whether there can be, you know, cannons for event <laughs> purposes obtained and they may go off um, at certain points if it's feasible and just to pass along which you may already be doing anyways one of the things when I was first doing parades and reenactments that I learned my lesson on is um, people pointed out to me that a lot of people are very sensitive they expect it down by Jason Russell House that musket firings and the noise but if there is a dedicated cannon spot um, whether it's David Lansom Way or somewhere else, um, maybe a little, I used to always just put a sandwich board out so that people would know. Um, just because it's it's very, um, and it's not just children. Some, no, you know, absolutely. There's other yeah. people, PTSD. I'm not being melodramatic. I, no, no, this is, de I don't think you're being melodramatic at all. These are things that we're actively discussing. Uh, first off, there will, we've already, Kevin Flynn already worked out that there will be no canon. Um, okay. And yes, and then, <laughs> Christine and I are working with the reenactors to, to see if there are different areas along the reenactment where we can not have gunfire or any kind of alarming noises. So all these details are, are part of the conditional approval that needs to be worked out for public safety. And thank you again. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Diggins. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, I mean, the, the, the work I see that you've done is impressive, very impressive. But um, regarding Mass Ave, the shutdown of Mass Ave, I mean, uh, especially across uh, Route 60, I mean, I'm not recalling um, that um, any time recently. So I don't have a problem with it. I mean, I, I'm just, I, I'm sure you're going to do this, I mean, uh, but just notify people like well in advance, I mean, um, uh, 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 of that closure, especially I mean, uh, on the, you know, Route 2 and, I mean, and I guess the, the um, I don't know how far, I mean, on, in the other direction you want to go, but, but I would imagine I mean, people would appreciate knowing far in advance that, that Mass Ave is going to be shut down that day for five hours. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Um, any further comments, Mr. Hurd? Yeah, again, we're, we're closing that down in... It's subject to discussions with the reenactors and with town staff. So in the event that that happens, it will be, there'll be a lot of lead time and, and the town staff will make sure that we do it safely. Okay, very good. Any further discussion from the board? Okay, so we have a motion by Mr. Hurd and a second by Mr. DeCourcy, and I've asked Ms. Marr to call the roll this evening. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. 
That's a 5 0 vote. Thank you very much. Um, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thanks to all. And I'll note that we have been joined by Attorney Mike Cunningham. Um, welcome, sir. And uh, then we'll go back to the top of the agenda and um, move to item two, the <coughs> approval of the sale of $200,000 in a sewer bond dated March the 4th, 2024, to the Massachusetts Water Resources Inf uh, Authority um, for the inflow. And we'll walk real slow, Mr. McGee. <laughs> this will take a while. <laughs> for the inflow and infiltration of, <laughs> no, you come on up. Inf for the inflow and infiltration of local financial assistance program and approval of a sale dated March 11, 2024 of $2,600,000 in water bonds to the Massachusetts Water Resources Authority for the Local Water System Assistance Program. And we are delighted to have our other Deputy Town Manager, Alex McGee, who is also the Finance Director for the town. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Um, we're here to seek approval for the sale of some bonds that have been authorized at uh, a couple of previous town meetings. As the chair noted, um, we're looking for $200,000 for sewer work and $2.6 million for water work. Um, the water project is to replace the water main along Pleasant Street. Um, and this is all MWRA uh, subsidized loans, so they come with a 0% interest, so it's very advantageous to borrow money this way. Thank you, sir. Um, I'll now turn to the board for motions, questions. Mrs. Mahan. I'd like to move approval the sale of the $200,000 sewer bond and the $2.6 million water bond. Mr. DeCourcy? Second. All right. Any discussion? Replacing 100-year-old pipe at 0% sounds like a good thing to me. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Okay, I think we're ready to vote then on a motion by Mrs. Mahan and seconded by Mr. DeCourcy. Ms. Marr. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. And Mr. Helmuth. Yes. That's a 4-0 vote. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McGee. So item three, uh, it's my pleasure to welcome Cecily Miller from the Arlington Commission for the Arts and Culture to talk to us about uh, a, a request for approval of Arlington Stories banners. Um, hi. hi, and I give, a, give, a, give us just a moment to get the uh, slides up on, uh, on the screen and into the Zoom. It's not a very fancy presentation this time. <laughs> Always good to see you. Um, see you too. Let me know when you want me to start. Okay, go right ahead. Okay. Um, well, the Arts Commission has, um, has supported a banner project in Arlington Center for about five years, I think, at this point. Um, and traditionally, they're, youth, they're done, designed by youth. Uh, it's called, been called the Youth Banner Project. This year, um, the public school system decided they wanted to kind of take a year off and think about how they wanted to manifest public art and whether this was the way that they wanted to do it. So um, we came up with a, a different proposal this year, which involves inviting three artists to share kind of people of Arlington, um, people they know, uh, people they think represent sort of uh, interesting um, identities and character in the town. And um, it's something that could recur year to year with different people. In a way, it's returned to a project, the first project that I did in Arlington, which was called Storefront Stories, if any of you remember that. And that was portraits of the local business owners in East Arlington. Um, this document just shows you three representative um, pieces of artwork by the three artists who've been invited. These are not the, the, the work that is going to be on the banners, um, but each artist will be working in their own style, and you can see that they do work in very different styles, which I think is kind of an interesting aspect to the project. Um, but there will be identity branding on each banner to make it clear this is one uniform project. Um, and I'm working actually with Katie to see if we can find a storefront location in Arlington Center 
to do a complimentary display of the banner artwork on, on paper and short 300 word written portraits of the people, why the artists chose these people and QR code to Arts Arlington and a little bit about the artists. So sort of a whole display that kind of explains the, the banner presentation. So altogether there will be nine banners, three by each of the three artists. Originally I was hoping to bring in a youth component to, to continue that aspect of the project. But in the end, what um, the Arlington High School Art Department decided to do is an internal banner project. So they'll be putting banners up on school property in front of the high school around the same time. So the projects will be somewhat complementary. So Great. that's the basic outline. Great. And the area, actually, if you want to flip up, although I made an error, it's, it's there are 11 to, to the map. There are 11, yeah, the, to the map. There are actually 11 banners, but that light pole banner stations, but it actually does extend up to here. There are three on this part of Mass Ave and eight on this part. Gotcha. I have a corrected map if you would like one for your records. Yeah, that would be good to supply to the select board office yeah. after the meeting. Yeah. Great, uh, thank you very much. So I'll now turn to the board for questions, comments, and motions. Mrs. Mahan. Um, I'd like to move approval for the Celebrating Arlington Stories banners series of April 1st, 2024 to May 31st, 2024. And um, it's my understanding that um, sometime in March we'll see, the uh, board will see what the banners that are going to go up will be? Yeah, we uh, sometime in March, exactly, okay. yep. mid-March. And I, I do want to say I do appreciate, um, this is really the first time I think I've seen this particular document, it looks very simple, but I think it's good that we have a banner schedule that already has um, the Chamber of Commerce listed in there and, and then the uh, Commission for Arts and Culture, and then as we move forward with any other banner requests, if we could continue to, to receive this so that um, one of the questions we always ask, because we used to find out after the fact that we had, had overlapping, conflicting times. So thank you to whoever did that and look forward to also seeing that in the future. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, and I should note that my understanding is that banners celebrating the high school graduation go up in June. Mm -hmm. So, you know, DPW will take ours down when those go up. You know, like ours might be up for a little bit in June if they're not ready, or if they're ready, it'll be right at that time frame, but I'm pretty sure they use all of those light poles. Okay, yeah. great. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll second Mrs. Mahan's motion, and then thank you for the presentation okay. tonight. Great. All right, well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, hold on a second. Uh, any, uh, Mr. Dickens. Yes, me, so I, I'm going to be happy. No, hold on, I'm sorry, I'm this. sorry, um, Len, if we could just um, take down the screen share so we can see, um, okay. see all, all of Mr. Dickens. Okay. Right. Yeah, yeah, okay, now, now we have all of you, sir. Right. Okay, cool. You know, so no, I, I'm, I'm very happy to, uh, I'll be very happy to vote for this. I, mean, I, I, I like the representative um, um, paintings, and I'm also, or, or drawings, being in. I am happy that you mentioned that the high school uh, is still having their, their, um, their, their banner, um, um, display and I was um, fortunate enough to be asked to be a judge again this year and I gotta tell you you know uh, there's some really impressive artwork coming out um, so if you can get yourself around the high school uh, when they have their banners up I think you'll be happy um, to, to see them and um, Miss Miller I'm gonna put you on the spot and ask you where is that um, utility box it's near the fire station okay near Helena's all right. I'll have to keep an eye out for it. I mean, I walk past her a lot. And I haven't seen it. But I really like that one. I really, really like it. So, so oh, thank no, you. Oh, no, no, no. Wait. I think that's wrong. I think it's uh, on Broadway Plaza, actually. It's somewhere right in the center. And I'm right. forgetting now. Well, like I said, I'm putting you on the spot, but it's harmlessly so. So, uh, so but I also I want to talk with you about some other things. So I'll get in touch. So yeah. thank you very much for all the work you do. And, and um, you know, it's that design style is based on these trucks that are painted by 
the, their owners in Pakistan is the Pakistani um, folk art form, form, that the trucks that do these long distance deliveries are beautifully, colorfully painted. Yeah, it's spectacular. I mean, uh, and, and now it's just, I've learned something else. So thank you once again. All right, thank you very much. So, uh, we have a motion by Mrs. Mahan and seconded by Mr. DeCourcy. Ms. Marr. Mr. Jiggins. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. Helmuth. Yes. That's a 4-0 vote. Thank you very much. This now takes us to the consent agenda, items four, five, and six. Item four is the 2024 farmer's market. Uh, item five is acceptance of funds from various entities from the Health and Human Services Department. Item six is a request for a special one-day beer and wine license, March 9th, 2024, at the Robbins Library Reading Room for a private event by Lizzie Wyant. Return to the board for motions or discussion. Mr. DeCourcy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Move approval. Uh, Ms. Mahan. Second with one question. Sure. Um, I'm going to assume, unless town council tells me differently, that um, we do not need a separate vote for the acceptance of funds, um, agenda item five, that it can be done in the consent agenda. Attorney Cunningham, is that correct? Mrs. Ma is correct. Thank you. Thank you for checking. Uh, any further discussion on the consent agenda? Okay, on a motion for, appro for approval of the consent agenda by Mr. DeCourcy and seconded by Ms. Mrs. Mahan. Ms. Mar. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. Helmuth. Yes. Four zero vote. Thank you very much. Okay, this moves us on to our appointments. We have, um, we'll start with item seven, appointment to the Historic District Commission. This is the Jason and Gray Historic District. Kenneth Lubar, is Mr. Lubar in the room or on Zoom tonight? If you are in the Zoom, we'll bring you in. Raise your hand if that's, I don't see. Okay. Right. We do, do we have materials for Mr. Lubar's, let me switch over to my thing mm -hmm. here. Um, so I'll, you know, I'll leave this to my colleagues' discretion. Sometimes, sometimes we do um, approve um, appointments if we have sufficient materials, but that is really at the board's discretion. Um, I'd like to um, move approval. Um, we would, do have the attachment materials, and I'm not sure if he's um, taking Mr. Warden's previous spot, but I know with many of our commissions and committees um, needing to have a full membership with it, mm -hmm. publicly notice uh, committees needs to move forward, but that we certainly would ask that he come either in person or at hybrid remotely um, at a future meeting. So I would move approval. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that is, that is uh, neglected to say that is a common practice as well, and I think a wise one. Um, so uh, do we have a second or other discussion? Mr. DeCourcy? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll second that and, and, and with that condition. And, okay. and thank you for adding that, Mrs. Mahan. All right. I'll save my comment for when he comes. Okay. It's a very positive comment, but I'll save it for then. Okay. All right, so we have a, uh, a motion uh, to approve with a, a condition on a request to, uh, to appear before the board at a future date by Mrs. Mahan and seconded by Mr. DeCourcy. Mrs. Mar. Ms. Mar. Mi Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. Helmuth. Yes. 4 0. Okay, so we have two appointments to the tree committee. Uh, Attorney Cunningham, can you remind me if we need to vote these individually or together? Individually, Mr. Chair. I'm sorry, say, say again. Individually, Mr. Thank, thank you, sir. Individually, Mr. Chair, yeah, I'm sorry. There we go. No, no that's right. You know, we, we are all roll, rolling with the, with the uh, inner tubes here. All right. <laughs> okay, so let's start with Marina Popova. And I'm probably not saying the name right. You please tell me how to say it correctly. She's in the room tonight. <laughs> Welcome. Please, uh, thank you for your, for your interest. Please just introduce yourself and just very briefly express your interest in serving on the tree committee. Uh, so I'm, uh, I am Marina Popova. Uh, I'm very interested in joining the tree committee because I'm a huge nature lover. We feed bunnies in our backyard and stuff. And, uh, and the trees, is, I think, is the most precious thing that we have that helps everyone. And I learned all the great stuff that tree committee is doing, like increasing the tree canopy in Arlington. And I really want to help because I think that everyone deserves to reap the benefits of that. And that's 
why I'm trying to join. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. So I'll now turn to the board uh, for uh, motions and questions and comments. Mr. DeCourcy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and Mr. Fobot, thank you for your willingness to serve. I'll, I'll move approval, and, and thank you for the letter uh, expressing your interest, and uh, I know you're helping your friends get rid of invasives. I know a lot of us in our neighborhood could uh, use that help as well, but th thanks for your interest and your willingness. Ms. Mahan? I'll also second it and, and say welcome. This is a uh, really important committee, as all of our committees are, uh, but especially with climate change issues, besides the aesthetics and, and, and other positives around what the tree committee does. Uh, this is a very active, as you know, um, committee um, that really does a, a lot of thoughtful, has a lot of thoughtful deliberations, discussions at meetings, and has really consistently been putting forward um, Warren articles and, and suggested policies moving forward. Um, which have been beneficial for the town. But the other thing that's really exciting about that, it's been educational too. Um, I didn't realize how important trees are and canopies and the uh, breath width and other things um, until we had a formal tree committee. So thank you so much for your willingness to do this. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Any other discussion? Yes, good old DBH. Hi, Mrs. Mahan. Anyways, um, thank you very much, Mita, for, for joining forces with us. And, and I'm sure you'll figure out some way to uh, apply your big data skills I mean, to help you out on the tree committee. So thank you once again. So. <laughs> <laughs> very well. All right, so we have a motion to appoint by Mr. DeCourcy and seconded by Mrs. Mahan. Ms. Mahan. Mr. Diggins. Oops. I muted myself. Sorry about that. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. Helmuth. Yes. 4 0 vote. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you again for your willingness to serve. We look forward to it. And then we have uh, Olivia Ares. Mm -hmm. uh, please correct my pronunciation if I got that wrong. It was very good. Thank oh. you. Very good. Welcome, sir. Please, uh, uh, as before, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about uh, your service. Thank you very much. Well, thank you for the opportunity to be here. Um, I've been living in Arlington for 15 years. I love this town. I also see it's one that is changing very fast. And I think that the preservation of our canopy and our trees should be part of any plans we have to grow uh, the town and beautify it. Uh, I'm deeply committed to um, contributing to our fight against climate change. I think trees have a role to play. I think trees have an economic value for the town, for homes. And uh, having uh, been part of the tree committee for a couple of sessions, I think it's the right place to apply my commitment, my motivation, whatever skills I have to help further that mission of protecting, growing our tree canopy in the town. So I welcome the opportunity to be part of this action. Thank you very much. Now I'll turn to the board. Mrs. Maud. <clears throat> I would like to move approval of Olivier Ares um, and with that, my thanks. Uh, my, my previous remarks, but I'm also very excited to see all your different affiliations with uh, trustees of reservation, the Mass Audubon Society, the uh, Appalachian Mountain Club. I know quite a few Arlington residents uh -huh. are also involved, I as know. you are, uh, with those. So it's sort of like old home week um, for Arlingtonians. With, uh, but to me, that that's sort of each member brings a certain kind of expertise or something that really is going to augment, add to um, the committee that we have. So I'm really excited to see that because um, I know you'll be able to, it's going to sound like a pun, help grow this committee um, in a way that perhaps um, someone like myself um, had not thought about. So uh, as I said before, and I mean this, it's an extremely important committee and it's done a lot of good things in, in the past and I know it will in the future. And, Thank you for your willingness to do this because we couldn't afford to pay you, but I appreciate it. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Mr. DeCourcy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll second Mrs. Mahan's motion, and thank you, Mr. Aries, for your interest. And I also noted your um, experience as a volunteer and all the work you've done with the trustees of reservations and, and uh, that, that experience. I know a number of people in town, I'm a member of that it, it, it as well, and um, appreciate your willingness to step up and serve on the tree committee. Thank you for the opportunity. Okay. Further discussion? Yeah. Mr. Yes, and, and, and thank you once again. You know, 
um, uh, as my colleagues have done, Ian, and, and um, as uh, my colleague, Mr. Corsi, uh, mentioned, I mean, your you know, various other activities and your pro bono um, work is also very impressive. I mean, quite the, you have quite the diversity of, 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 um, of interest, I mean, and so uh, I think we'll benefit from that in lots of ways. So thank you once again. So I think we're ready to vote on a motion to appoint by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. DeCourcy. Ms. Mar. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. Helmuth. Yes. 4 0 vote. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank Looking you. Look forward to your service. And, uh, you know, I often say uh, after appointments and sometimes during them, it's, it's always a reminder to talk with these folks. And, and read their resumes, and we all do read the letters and resumes, and just how fortunate we are that, that we have so many highly qualified, highly committed volunteers. That's part of what makes Arlington such a well-run town, and we are very, very grateful. Let's move on to item nine under licenses and permits. For approval, a common vitular license for Kilos Taqueria at 162 Mass Avenue. We have Jamie Herrera. Please, come on up. Thank you for choosing Arlington for your business. Uh, if you would just introduce yourselves, and uh, we have your materials in front of us, but just for the public's benefit, talk us, tell us a little bit about the plans for your business. Great. Thank you. My name is David. I'm co-owner with my uncle over the place. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Jamie Carrera, nephew. Uh, we, um, first of all, want to say that we are very sorry for your loss. I, you. I know how hard it can be. I, not too long ago, we lost our father, so, oh, sorry. so we, sorry, we are very sorry for that. Very excited to be here um, tonight and for the opportunity, and, uh, and, and so grateful for the opportunity to uh, just be part of uh, Arlington, the town of Arlington and this way serving the community when it comes to food, uh, food industry. We're very excited. Thank you for the opportunity. Well, as you know, I'm, I'm happy to be here. Thank you very much for the, uh, the city being great with us. Uh, all the paperwork, the process, I, I appreciate that a lot. Um, we're excited, I'm excited, uh, so you know, we're, for the reason why we're here, right? Uh, um, we can't wait to be part of this town, uh, be part of the community, and serve and do what I love, which is feed people, you know, serve food. bring food, <laughs> serve food. food. So, um, um, again, uh, I think my uncle, too, is happy to be here. And uh, yeah. we want to be part of the community. Um, what else I can say? Very excited. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Thank you so much. So I will now turn to the board for questions, comments, and motions. Mrs. Mahan. Uh, first, I'll move approval and, uh, and say welcome. Um, I know in the restaurant business how difficult it is. Uh, some of my family members are also involved in that. And a lot of things, and I'm so sorry to hear about you, Dad. Thank you. Um, I'm fortunate to have my dad still with me, so, um, but God bless you and your family for that. And thank you for thinking of Ms. Rainville. But um, I know how difficult the, the restaurant business is. And a lot of times, I want to say 95%, it's usually a family run business mm -hmm. because you do give your heart and soul, and really your family is the one that, that will do that for you. Um, and, and I wish you nothing but success. I understand you're already down there making some improvements. People are telling me if I go down and peek in, I can see on the chalkboard some of your offerings that you already uh, submitted to us. I think you're very ambitious doing breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, but uh, uh, the reason we're doing that because I've personally, personally been doing that for like 20 years, you know. No, so I know that's... what involves. I know it's a lot of responsibility. I've been dealing with the inspection for so many years with the city. So uh, we know what we're going to, you know. And I like it. It, it, I, I enjoy mm -hmm. what I do, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason I, we're doing this. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing this. Because I have experience with family members before. Not direct family, but they get into this with zero experience, and I know where they end. Mm -hmm. So we do it for a reason. Yeah. No, and I'm really excited for you. And as you move forward, this is not a requirement, but um, our planning department, um, planning director, Claire Ricker, and or the Chamber of Commerce in terms of community events that happen, especially like in East Arlington, this Feast of the East, usually in June, mm -hmm. which is a big community event. Um, it, I'm, I'm not saying you have to do either one, but if you 
I make sure you communicate with either or, or both of those entities. They'll keep you in the loop for everything that's going on. Yeah, I have dealt with stuff like that before, which is great, you know. Yeah. And uh, one thing I want to mention, uh, we have special discount for, uh, for responders, and I would love the city to come with us and uh, I'll give you a discount too, special discount, be part of us. We want to wanna work with the city, with the community. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. DeCourcy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Now, second Mrs. Mahan's motion, and, and I'm sorry for your loss. I, I thank thought you. it would be father, and, and thank you for providing all the information on your application. It looks like a great menu, and, and uh, it's a long day, 6 a.m. to 11, so <laughs> pace yourself, but uh, yeah. best of luck. We got people that are willing to yeah. work, so yeah, yeah. yeah. And again, thank you, I mean, the people around the community. Amazing. They've been amazing. Uh, here on the, on the town hall, they've been amazing. It, since the first day, you know, everybody's helps telling us, you know, where to go, what to do, and it's, it's, been, a, it's been a great experience. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Mr. Diggins on, on Zoom. Yes, I mean, yeah, I mean, Suzo's hardly been gone, and now the space is filled up. That's great. Um, no empty storefront there. And, and, and I, as Ms. Mahan, Ms. Mahan pointed out, you know, uh, you're, you're doing breakfast too, so you're going to give Arlington Town Diner a run for their money. And I see that you have seven smoothies. I love smoothies. I mean, so that's going to be one. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> one each day of the week, I mean, and, and you know what, I mean, I'm just going to make this as a, a minor suggestion, protein powder in a smoothie, you know, they, they, they nice margins on those. those, nice margins, so that's it, thank you. Yeah, I'll take your recommendation, though, I know, <laughs> you're a gym guy, yeah. I can tell, wait, but... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, any further discussion? Uh, thank you again for choosing Arlington. We wish you the best of luck in your business. Thank you. So thank we're ready you. for a vote now on a motion to approve by Mrs. Mahan and seconded by Mr. DeCourcy. Ms. Marr. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Spore zero vote. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you. Good thank, you. thank you for coming. And don't forget, you're all going to have a discount. <laughs> <laughs> no, make us pay full price right, or yeah. more. Yeah. Yeah. Full, full yeah. price just to support you, yes. <laughs> Charge yeah. extra. Yeah. Bye, guys. Thank you. Okay, that brings us to item 11, the vote of a placement of historic marker. And I believe we're welcoming back uh, Ms. Luzai, Luzai, our economic development coordinator. Uh, and we have some display here. A little behind. So and, um, and, and, and Ms. Mara, I know you're juggling a lot of things, but uh, maybe for the lower screen, if it's possible to, um, yeah, exactly. Just make our remote member bigger. Perfect. Please. Hi, everyone again. Um, my name is Katie Lusai, Economic Development Coordinator. I'll try to make this brief since I know you still have quite a few items on the agenda. Um, so I'm before the board to get, um, again, it's conditional approval based on a final location for the placement of a marker indicating uh, General Lafayette's visit to Arlington, which was at the time West Cambridge. Um, so this is a larger organization who is uh, responsible for creating these markers and um, getting them in different spots along the Lafayette Trail. They are called the Lafayette Trail um, Organization. Um, they fully fund the creation of these markers, um, so these markers are fully paid for, which is always a great place to start. And from the town's responsibilities, um, it would be our commitment to install these and just make sure that we have the approval for whatever that location is. So just to give you a little bit of backstory about General Lafayette's visit, he came through West Cambridge on September 2nd, uh, 1824. This year is 2024, which marks the 200th commemoration of this visit. Um, General Lafayette had a big impact in formulating um, the American democracy, and so he had uh, a very big celebratory uh, final tour um, in 1824 and 1825. Um, currently, we do have enough evidence uh, through secondary sources to justify putting a marker in our community. I've provided a few here. Um, we don't have any primary sources, which means that our marker has to be a little uh, I'm a little vague, a little general in the language. Um, also, given our name changes, um, it has to be a pretty simplified uh, marker language, which I've provided on the next uh, slide. 
So our marker would say Lafayette's tour on September 2nd, 1824. General Lafayette was welcomed in this town. I did, our, I did uh, make the conversation and argument to say West Cambridge, in parentheses, Arlington. They thought it was a little too wordy. And this is where we landed. Uh, local citizens greeted him in front of the meeting house, which is the present day uh, Universal Unitarian Church. Um, and below is their, uh, the, the foundation that pays for these markers. Uh, just to give you some context on the next slide, I've provided, and it's a little difficult to see, so I apologize for that. Um, it's, this is just one piece of a very large map. But um, on this marker map, we have uh, in purple, the purple square is where the Arlington marker would be, and the blue dots are where other current markers are. So it is a very massive um, network. Um, nearby markers include Lexington and Medford, um, so placing a marker here would really um, add continuity on that trail, especially um, from Lexington through Medford because that was the, the route that he took. I've thrown out a couple of proposed locations. Again, I'm, final, I'm working on a finalized uh, location because ideally it would be in front of the first parish, but of course that's completely up to them. Um, well, ideally it's completely up to them whether or not they wanna have a marker there. What uh, the foundation has asked for is that it would be placed somewhere along Mass Ave. Um, if you don't mind moving to the next slide, Jim. Um, we could place it in Whittemore Park. Those are just a couple of, of ideas. I'm very cognizant of not overcrowding any particular area in Arlington Center with too many markers because there's a lot of history and a lot happened. And we love to have markers, but I don't want anything to be too distracting. Um, Yes, so what I'm really asking for is conditional approval to make sure that this marker would be approved by the select board, that you are in support of it. Um, if you have any feedback or suggestions or any strong opinions about uh, where would you would like this placed, I am all ears. Okay. And so we can do conditional approval tonight. Would, would you need to come back to the board for final approval of the location? Or are you asking for us for that conditional approval to give discretion to the town manager? Yes, yes, the latter. That one? Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. So I'll now turn to my colleagues for discussion. Mrs. Mahan. I'd like to uh, move approval of the placement, future place placement of the historical marker. Um, and in terms of, I, I'm, I would be interested uh, what the uh, Historic Society and, and others have to say, which I know you've been working with them and will continue to work with them. If you're asking my opinion of where it would, would be, since um, I think you said it was the current UU Unitarian Universalist Church was, quote unquote, the meeting house. Um, my suggestion would be somewhere where if you're standing near in front of, beside the marker, you somehow can see that. I'm um, not saying it has to necessarily be in front of that, but that's just my only suggestion, but it should not be me who decides, it should be I, you. I very much welcome your suggestion, and I will note, and I should have, I should have said, I was at the Historical Society meeting last night uh, to present this and got, and got their feedback and opinions and, and blessing. Oh, great, well. thank you. Thank and you. That's a conditional approval with uh, authorizing the town manager to make the final call. Yes, Mr. Yes. Chairman, thank you. And um, ultimately, I'll also note, since it is the 200th anniversary, our goal is to have this in place by September, which is why I'm bringing it before the board now, so that it can be ordered and hopefully in, uh, get here in time for a wonderful celebration. Got it. Mr. Corsi. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, I'll second Mrs. Mahan's motion. I'm glad to hear uh, about the Historical Society, because I had Absolutely. the same question. <laughs> and, and I will note, um, it is September 2nd is a, a special day. I, I saw the draft. Um, the slide four, the draft marker that uh, General Lafayette was welcomed on September 2nd, 1824. 140 years later, I was welcomed to Arlington when I was born at Sims Hospital. So maybe, maybe it's, we'll squeeze it, you in on not, the not as much fanfare <laughs> that one, Mr. Chairman. But did you come in on a horse? Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. Um, but but thank you for providing the additional information on other communities as well, because I, I was aware that there was one in Reading. I think there's. Uh, some in other parts of the state, and that's helpful. Yes, you're, you're, um, I definitely suggest checking out the website because it's, it's quite an impressive, it's quite an impressive markers all over, all over the country, really. Great, thank you. Uh, Mr. Diggins, is it hand raise? Yep, thank you. So I take it this will be permanent. Say again, sir? I'm sorry, this will be a permanent marker? The question is, is this a permanent? It is, it is a permanent marker. Um, I mean, it, it could yep. be taken yep. out. Yeah, no, that's fine. Go ahead, Mr. Diggins. 
No, no, okay. So, see, so, yeah, I mean, often what I, I tell people when they like want something permanent is like, well, you know, when when it's permanent, a it doesn't allow the space to be used for anything else, you know. And when something's there all the time, we people just kind of stop paying attention to it. Me, so, so me, I find generally, I mean, if you take something down and put it back up, you can also have like a little ceremony about you know, bringing it back. I just put that out there. I mean, I'm going to agree with this. You know, I'm just, I'm just saying from discussions I've had with other people about wanting to commemorate other things on a permanent basis and how we often say, uh, can we not do permanent, you know, but that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Thank you. Any further discussion, Ms. Mahan? That made me think of something uh, in terms of whether it's permanent or not. Uh, one of the things I used to always ask Lexington uh, when I first came on the scene is, you know, how, how is your tourism so vibrant? You know, wh what is it Lexington's doing that Arlington isn't? And at the same time, at that same meeting 15, 18 years ago, they said, how the heck do you have all those restaurants in Arlington? Why is it so vibrant? What isn't Lexington doing? But one of the things, there were two things they told me for tourism, which I know is a slice of the pie of your job as well as the other committees you interface is. They said, you know, two big things, Lexington tourism that has made us so uh, successful. I thought they were going to say hotels, but it was um, bus, getting the bus companies mm -hmm. a place to turn in and be able to be on yes. the route. And right now, I think the Schwamm Mill is the only one that has that, and that's a last minute thing they throw in. But the other thing that they said was um, uh, historical markers, statues, etc. So um, I'd be for something permanent, if possible, because it's a historical marker. But the other thing is, if you could maybe just keep in mind with safety um, regulations, boundaries, but if it's something that, I mean, if it's way, way, way too high, you really can't. It, mm -hmm. it literally is people coming, taking a picture in front of it. So Absolutely. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so we have a uh, motion as described by Mrs. Mahan and seconded by Mr. DeCourcy. Ms. Mar. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. That's a 4 vote. Thank you. Thank you very much. This brings us to uh, items 12 and 13, and these were uh, items that, we, that the town manager suggested we place in case we needed them. Uh, a vote for a special town meeting for a date to be determined, and, uh, and then if we were to do that, we would then need uh, the next item, which would be the opening of that warrant. Uh, at this time, I'll turn to the town manager for comment. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, as you alluded to, it is customary to have uh, Oftentimes, we will need a special town meeting within our annual town meeting, and I appreciate the opportunity to have had this item held on the agenda for this evening, but uh, frankly, as I sit here today, I, I don't think that we have uh, any business that was not addressed within the annual town meeting warrant, and I don't see uh, there being a need to call a special within uh, this year's annual town meeting at this time. Thank you, and I, I'll add too that I did um, as a triple check uh, consulted with the chair of the finance committee and the chair of the redevelopment board, and they also uh, saw so no I had a need from their end for for in, uh, items for an embedded special. Um, so um, at this point, I don't think we actually need to do anything other than, other than just take no action, which doesn't require a vote. But I will certainly welcome any comments or questions from my colleagues. Mrs. Mm -hmm. Mahan, I just want to say uh, one of the other reasons we were perhaps pondering. Um, a special, which I'll talk about a little bit more mm -hmm. on a new business okay. um, regarding the MBTA assessments. But mm -hmm. as we all know, okay. we don't need a special. We don't can't a utilize special, a special yeah. for that. Thank okay. you. All right. Okay. So seeing, uh, seeing no other discussion, we will uh, move past those items and go on to uh, Warrant Article Hearings. So that's item 14. So we have four articles for review for the for those uh, uh, members of the public who are new to this process uh, with war articles on the warrant, which is an ag agenda for town meeting, which will start up in uh, late April. This is the annual town meeting. Uh, articles that are not zoning related and are not uh, money and finance related are heard by the select board. The select board's responsibility is to have a public hearing, so there'll be public comment at the end of each presentation. The board will, uh, has a duty to make a recommendation to town meeting about whether we support 
the proposal or not and with any details. Typically what we'll do on the night of the hearing is that we'll just uh, usually just indicate a positive action or, or no action with uh, some instructions to the town council and other staff to help flush out the vote. Those come back to us at a later date when we do final votes and comments. Um, so the, the uh, purpose of tonight is to hear about the Warren articles, to explain them, to provide an opportunity for public comment, and then for a recommended vote, uh, initial vote by the board. So uh, let's move to Article 23. We have endorsement of the CDBG application. Uh, deja vu in a good way. Hello, hello. <laughs> good to see you again. You just introduce yourself and present the article. Well, good evening. Um, thank you for your time tonight. I'm Mary Mizinski, the Community Development Block Grant Administrator for Arlington. Um, and I'll be presenting the CDBG subcommittee's recommendation for program year 50, um, fiscal year 2025. So this year we received 18 applications from 15 organizations and town departments. The applications fall into the following categories, affordable housing, public services, public facilities and improvements, and planning and administration. The request totaled over $1,646,000, which is roughly $645,000 more than our expected program year 50 allocation. Uh, the applications were rev reviewed by the CDBG subcommittee members individually using a rubric for evaluating projects and then reviewed collectively during two subcommittee meetings. The subcommittee established a budget totaling $1,001,000, which is our anticipated allocation for, from HUD for program year 50. Once HUD announces Arlington's <coughs> grant award for program year 50, the subcommittee may reconvene to adjust the budget as necessary. Um, any updates will then be presented to the select board. I'd like to thank the organizations that applied for CDBG, CDBG funding. Um, organizations that do not receive funding for program year 50 are invited to apply again next year. I'd like to thank all the CDBG subcommittee members, including Mrs. Mahan, Mr. Hurd, and Mr. Feeney, um, who made the, the difficult um, budget budgeting decisions with Arlington's limited CDBG grant funds. At this time, I'd like to request the select board and town manager approve the preliminary CDBG budget for program year 50 and move the CDBG report to town meeting for endorsement. Thank you. Thank you very much. And as was just noted, this is a vote that the town manager participates in as well. So I'll turn to my colleagues for discussion and motions. Mrs. Mahan. Uh, first, I'd like to uh, move approval. Um, of the endorsement of the CDBG application. Um, I want to thank Ms. Musinski um, for overseeing this process. I, I've been on the committee twice now. There was a little break in between. Um, and my second stint uh, certainly is very different than the first. And um, first, it's very appreciated by myself and the fellow subcommittee members uh, getting weeks in advance, you know, the notification of the process coming up the grading matrix rubric, rubric that we um, use as a guide and fill out, and I think we may have to fill it out because of HUD requirements, um, but it's certainly evolved along the way, and it's, it's really gotten to a, a great working document, and, um, and as um, Ms. Musinski pointed out, 1.6 plus request, 1,600,000 plus requests, and only a million dollars to do that, and uh, through the subcommittee meetings, um, having to flip through various members, especially your two representatives from the select board, of what did we do last year? What did we do two years ago? Can you go in and level fund everything? Can you try it at 2%? And um, it just eased right through, and, and, and that's a great testament for you being able to really wear all the hats you need to um, at that meeting. And um, I anticipate two to three hours each meeting, and we pretty much can get it done in an hour each time, um, which is really um, amazing. And I also want to thank Ms. Musinski and the, and the town manager and Mr. Feeney and Claire Rucker, our planning director, because it was along with the cuts that we needed to make, we also um, added more work to our department heads and, and town manager in terms of going back with that $600,000 cut and really reevaluating and retooling, um, <clears throat> but still being able to um, provide the services that I know the residents and the businesses of the town have come to expect. So um, it looks like, you know, and there were some really difficult decisions. Um, Arlington Eats, Eats um, 
presented a great program, which we would love to fund. Um, but as Andy Doan noted um, when she was in here, I think at our last meeting from Arlington Eats, um, a lot of the, uh, close to all of the applicants and people who are getting money from CDBG under public services, Arlington Needs works with um, and is very familiar with those programs. So very difficult decision, but um, there was a lot of thought, um, blood, sweat, and tears put into this. And I really, I, I know I'm probably going on too long, but it's a great process, and I appreciate you sort of heralding us through that um, and so that we're productive, make the difficult decisions, but definitely have all the information and the conversation we need to have to get to as best a decision as we can. And Mr. Hurd, honestly, is in, invaluable. The first meeting, I couldn't even really call in. <laughs> my speakers on my laptop were lousy. Um, but, you know, he just uh, took a hold of that and, and ran with it also. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Mr. DeCourcy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll, I'll second Mrs. Mahan's motion. I want to thank everybody on the subcommittee. And as I look at the schedule this year, I can imagine what you went through because I, I saw the amounts of the request and we ended up in, you have that 15% limitation on public service and it must have been very, very difficult and um, probably more challenging than any any year, certainly from what I've received. And, and, um, and I know you also looked at other opportunities maybe for some of these applicants, whether it's CPA or, or, or elsewhere. So it's, it's tough to, not being able to fund everything, and, and I know there's, there's probably some people who wish they, their organizations, they wish they got a little bit more, but it's just, it's just not available. So thank you for all the work and for the difficult decisions that you had to make. Yes, yeah, I agree. You know, thanks, it was hard because, because as they came in, I actually wanted to give them more than they were asking for because they made such a good case me for, for their cause it's me. So I, I, I definitely know this is hard and I appreciate and what you've done and I'm sure everyone's gonna be appreciative of me for what they get and hopefully next year things will be different. Thank you once again. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Any further discussion? Any comments from the town manager who gets a vote on this? No, I just wanted to uh, also call out Mary's wonderful work on this process. It really was seamless and she did uh, obviously this is one of the first warrant articles we're hearing and uh, you know that obviously put us on a tighter time frame but she kept us uh, on track to be prepared with a detailed report this evening so I just wanted to thank her personally yeah thank you for that I, I'm glad that you mentioned that too then it was asking um, a, a much quicker turnaround we're on a, I think the earliest track ever for having our warrant ready and, and starting our hearings with this and uh, we appreciate the flexibility and the and the extra early work on that so, um, okay, so uh, remembering to include the town manager, I will note on a motion by, uh, to approve it by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. DeCourcy. Ms. Marr. Mr. Dickens. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. Helmuth. Yes. Mr. Feeney. Yes. It's a 5 0 vote. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Very thank much. you. <laughs> Good to see you. It moves us to Article 24, Revolving Funds, and I believe we welcome back Mr. McGee to talk to us about the article. Hello again. Hello again. So, um, just introduce yourself for the uh, again, late yeah, I, uh, Alex McGee, Deputy Town Manager, Finance Director. Um, so we are seeking endorsement for the, our list of revolving funds. Um, which will be presented on a warrant article uh, number 24 at the annual town meeting. Um, a lot of these are very familiar to this board and to the town meeting members when they ultimately vote on them. Um, there are, we're seeking to establish two new revolving funds this year, um, a Cutter Gallery Rentals uh, with a spending cap not to exceed $15,000, and that'll be uh, rentals to hold small events at the Cutter Gallery and then uh, a community center rentals fund to leverage some of the new facilities at the community center um, with a spending cap of $50,000. Um, these, all of these revolving funds, the, the whole point of a revolving fund is to have uh, revenues that are associated with the fund that can provide for continuing operations of the sort of associated activities of the fund. Um, another big change that we're looking at in FY25 is an increase to the private ways repair fund. Um, this is one that we have run up against our spending cap before. Um, 
which was previously set at $300,000. We're seeking to increase the cap to $1 million. Um, that doesn't mean that we're going to be ever expending any more money than we normally would in any given fiscal year, but this just sets a new high ceiling that we cannot go above. Um, with the increase in costs associated with horizontal construction <coughs> and the increase in requests to do private way repairs, uh, we think that this is a prudent move. Uh, we are also seeking a change in how much revenue we collect up front as part of these projects um, with the intent to make this truly a self-sustaining um, sort of engine for doing those kinds of repairs. Beyond that, um, all of the revolving fund spending caps remain the same as they have in the past. Um, there are four revolving funds, which I'll say are sort of on our watch list. Um, they have $0 in anticipated revenues and $0 in anticipated expenses. And if we arrive at this juncture next year without really any other anticipated revenues or expenditures, we may want to look at dissolving those funds as well. Um, so uh, one other to note, um, our conservation revolving fund was dissolved at the FY or at the 2023 annual town meeting, so that does not appear on this list anymore. Um, and the funds from that were transferred, the fund balance, which was not very large, was transferred out of that fund when we dissolved it. Okay. Um, so that is, in a nutshell, what we're looking for. Thank you very much. Um, and I neglected in the previous item to hold public comment because it's a public hearing. So I'll ask Mr. Cunningham, after we finish this item, how, how best to, to fix that. Um, but for now, let's do, let's do this one right. So I'll now turn to the public and ask, uh, because this is a public hearing, if there is public comment on this, the Article 24 revolving funds. If you wish to comment, please raise your hand in Zoom or in the room physically. Okay, I'll now turn to members of the board for comments and motions. Mr. DeCourcy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll, yeah, I'll move to reauthorize the revolving funds um, listed here. And then thank you, Mr. McGee, for the presentation. And, and you mentioned some of the inactive ones. and. I don't know if the, the Gibbs School, there's a balance in it, the energy fund, where that's back as a, a, a sixth grade for the, for the past few years. I think the intent on that was when we, there was more rental activity. I don't know if that's one to be, to be looked at over the next few years as well. There might still be some um, minimal rental activity, but it doesn't look like there's much activity. So, thank you for the presentation. Yeah. Okay, do I have a second from uh, the room or in Zoom? Second. All right. Second by Mrs. Mahan. Any discussion, Mr. Mahan? I see. Oh, Attorney Cunningham. After him. Mr. Chair, I just wanted to mention it's, it's not in the memo that I prepared for the board, but the enabling statute for this, these revolving funds is Chapter 44, Section 53 and a half. And the, the two new requested revolving funds uh, set forth by the town manager and his staff uh, are also appropriately established uh, if, if this board chooses to, to uh, support this article. Thank you very much, sir. Ms. Bond? <clears throat> I think my brain is playing tricks on me. Um, was the any function of the cemetery commission, perhaps even the chapel, was that at one time a revolving fund and it's not? It is currently still a revolving fund. Is it? It's I'm just on not... our watch list, yeah. It's, um, oh, okay, so it's not on here. It, it's, uh, it's on Are... the last page of this. There's three pages worth of funds listed. It's the second to the last. It's, oh, okay. It's, now I see it. I'm sorry. No, it, this has gone down like three times, and I didn't have it printed out in paper. So now I do see that. Okay. And it is chapel. Okay, good. I'm saying I thought I just, Okay, that's it. Good memory. I'm not trying to be like, oh, I remember that. I don't... I, but anyways, whatever. Melodramatic. Sorry. Um, Second, Mr. DeCourcy's motion. Thank you very good. Mr. Diggins? Thank you, Mr. Chair. You know, so I, I do think it's good to take the private way um, fund down for the raise the cap to, to a million. You, you mentioned, though, that you're going to try to bring in more money up front. You know? So how much more, percentage-wise? Right. So, so the change, so currently we request um, one-third of funds be brought up front, and the, re yeah. the, the requested change is to bring two-thirds of the project cost up front. So it'll lead to a higher initial cash flow to sort of launch into the project. Right, right. So, so, uh, so do you... What do you imagine would be the impact 
and on the residents who are trying to you know, do a better because that's, that's just that's kind of doubled up front you know great yeah um typically so so what we have seen is that somewhere in the 70 to 80 percent range of projects are paid in full up front so okay. um, so most of the time they're paid in full most residents okay. elect to do that and so we thought that this was a reasonable number to, to get to that would allow us sort of uh, smoother operations and to bring more projects on board in any given year. No, no, that's, that's, that's a relief to hear because also I could imagine that if people were struggling to do it, then it would you know, provide more incentive me for people to not try to do the betterment, you know, uh, or for it for them. You see, I mean, you have to have two thirds of the residents, you know, um, vote for it, and so that could provide I me mean, less incentive for them to vote for it. So that that's reassuring. So, so yeah, and was, again, the one million is um, good. I mean, and and as you know, the prices um, have gone up, and they'll probably go up again. I mean, and we'll may have to raise this again, and maybe also be a function. You know, like we have a lot of projects coming, you know, to to the foreground now, and it may be, you know, that you know we have these these kind of you know, like, um, what do you call it? like pig in the python uh, effect? You know, uh, uh, because like they come to they they we do them now and then then 40 years from now you know, we have to do all these again. So so just something to keep in mind. But um, yeah, I'll be happy to support this. And uh, I believe the town manager had a further comment. Yeah, I think I just wanted to add some additional context along the lines of what Mr. Diggins is pointing out is that. The change that Mr. McGee proposed will be discussed in a future warrant article hearing with respect to our uh, betterment or private way uh, bylaw. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I look for I look for that discussion. I think since it was, since the point was raised, um, if you can confirm my my understanding of this is that the, the if if in that part of the discussion this is the two thirds and that affects the revolving funds, so that's the relevance. Uh, but that's two thirds of the money needs to be raised. It's not. It's not a requirement that each abutter contribute two thirds up front. Correct. Right, yeah. So total just the project, to, right. total project. Yeah. Right. So I mean, given, given what you said of the seventy to eighty percent already coming in, you know, uh, fully all the time, and that's the the basis of our comfort with that. Right. And then, and then the balance of uh, that seventy to eighty percent would elect to uh, pay this betterment on, as a betterment on their tax bills. So over spread over five years, they would pay whatever proportion of the project is theirs. Got it. Great. Okay. Any further discussion? All right. And we did public comment on this. All right. So I think we're ready for a vote. We have a motion uh, for a favorable action by Mr. 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 Chair. Yeah, Mr. Yes. Yes. I, I, I saw Mr. Cunningham. Uh, Attorney Cunningham. I did, Mr. Diggins, and thank you, but I'm sorry, Mr. Mr. Chair. I think Sorry. Zoom is failing us at the moment, Attorney Cunningham, and right. um, breaking up a little right, bit. Cool. I'll, make, I'll make my comment. I'm so, Mr. Diggins correctly saw me, but if you could, I'll, I'll, re, I'll make a comment afterwards if you proceed with the vote, Mr. Chair. I'm sorry about that. Okay. All right, so um, I think we're ready to vote on this. Uh, Mrs. Mismar. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. Helmuth. Yes. 4-0 vote. Okay, good. And assuming that the uh, the Zoom is uh, is connection is working, Attorney Cunningham, um, since since uh, the chair neglected to have public comment for Article 23, do should we um, obviously invite that now? But should we reopen that hearing and then revote, or what? What? Uh, what's your suggestion? My recommendation, Mr. Chair. First of all, I should remind you, Mr. Chair, that's not the chair's fault. You got a lot on your plate. Uh, my connection is spotty, and I apologize for that. But I would recommend that the chair allow for public comment, if any, at this time. And then, depending on the result of that call, the there could be a motion from a member to revote. All right. Yeah, that sounds good to me as well. All right. So, uh, thank you, Attorney Cunningham, and. Um, the, uh, so let's reopen uh, Article 23, the endorsement of the CDBG application. We don't need to, to redo the presentation, but I will invite public comment uh, on that. So if you are in Zoom and wish to comment on Article 23, please raise your hand in Zoom at this time. Likewise, if you're in the room, please do the same thing. Okay, Ms. Mark? Seeing none, thank All right, you. seeing none. Okay, thank you. So, uh, Attorney Cunningham suggested it might be prudent for a member to suggest a, a motion for a revote. 
Move approval of Article 23. Second. Okay, on a motion uh, to approve by Ms. Mahan and seconded by Mr. DeCourcy and including the town manager in this vote, Ms. Marr. Mr. Diggins. Oh, Mr. Diggins, yes. I'm sorry, I missed you there. Didn't see your hand go up in Zoom. Oh, I think she was just calling the roll. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Then, yeah. as you were. <laughs> Mr. Yeah. Diggins. Yes. No Mr. Problem. DeCourcy. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. Helmuth. Yes. Mr. Feeney. Yes. All right. That's five zero. Well done. Thank you. It's, uh, it's especially busy with remote members tonight, and it is a different experience, I must say. Uh, I'm still getting used to that. Uh, well, there we go. But I'll be back in March, please. So I'll be back to the next meeting. Just when you're getting used to it, I'll be back. <laughs> well, that'll, that'll be a pleasure. We miss you. All right, so that takes us to Article 36, Endorsement of the Parking Benefit District Expenditures. Mr. McGee, are you here for that too? Yes, sir, thank you, Mr. Chair. So Article 36, um, we're seeking endorsement for the Parking Benefit District Expenditures Budget. Um, this is an annual budget that is prepared uh, with the sort of, this, with a specific focus of the revenues that are generated by the Parking Benefits District, which essentially is that you can think of that as the bounds uh, along Mass Ave that has metered parking. Um, and so this takes into account all of the revenues that we anticipate collecting in a given year uh, on one side of the ledger and then on the other side, all of the sort of maintenance uh, operations and then other expenditures that we anticipate um, in the given fiscal year. So in FY24, we're starting the year with a fund balance of $623,000. Uh, and this year, we're planning on uh, closing the year with a balanced revenue and expenditure number. Now, whether we come in exactly at that level, we're not entirely sure, but we're, pr we're tracking pretty, pretty good, uh, a little ahead of schedule with our revenues, and that is even with a couple months of downtime over last summer with our meter operations, so that's good news there. Um, so we anticipate the same starting fund balance in FY25, um, and then making some targeted investments in 25 to the parking benefits district. If Mr. Feeney wants to talk about some of those high level things, um, I'll turn it over to him. Sure, so there were three items within the parking benefit district expenditure budget that I would highlight for the board as they are sort of you know, what I would call one-time expenditures. The first is for the Russell Common lot. Uh, so there we've been have some design and planning work underway through Public Works and our own engineering division to look at rehabbing the islands within uh, the Russell Common lot, which are uh, fr frankly a bit tired, but also a challenge to maintain. So we're re-envisioning uh, those islands whereby we would remove much of the uh, currently impervious surface, replace it with some measure of uh, pervious surface, but also seek to uh, replace and provide a better environment for the existing trees which are struggling uh, to thrive and are not providing the canopy that folks would hope for, uh, say, you know, the farmer's market or other events that happen in that lot. So, you know, that's one sort of specialty project that we're looking uh, forward to implementing and really making an improvement within that lot with an eye towards increasing shade and tree canopy. Uh, the second would be uh, a line called electric upgrades. Uh, Last construction season, I headed up an effort to have uh, what we know as GFCIs or receptacles put atop some of the uh, pedestrian scale lighting poles in Broadway Plaza so that like we do in Arlington Heights and in East Arlington, we have a place to plug in uh, string lights that could then be wrapped in a serpentine fashion around the light poles. So what we hope with that line is to uh, expand that effort and continue to install additional receptacles on the uh, somewhat dated uh, pedestrian scale lights in Arlington Center so we can hopefully over time achieve a uniform aesthetic as you drive through uh, our business districts from uh, sort of front to back or top to bottom, however you want to think about that. And then uh, a line as well, uh, 
called for the 200th, uh, 250th decoration. So again, that would be uh, a one-time effort to increase uh, and generate new banners, provide for uh, additional flags and uh, a number of other types of decorations and event and activity support for uh, activities surrounding the 250th celebration. Uh, but as Mr. McGee alluded to, you know, some of the other items are sort of year over year and more annual operations. I just wanted to flag some of those sort of above and beyond efforts that we were looking at out of within the parking benefit district. And I want to, uh, you know, well, I have the opportunity to thank the, you know, we had to call the a meeting of the parking advisory committee and they were able to, you know, meet this morning to uh, review this budget, but also, you know, propose some other projects that we would undertake under our streetscape improvement lines. So we try to uh, get input not only from committee members, but the Chamber of Commerce, uh, Katie Luzai, our economic development coordinator. So uh, that was a great effort and happy to see this uh, before the board this evening. Thank you, both of you. And now turn to the board. Mrs. Mahan. Um, I'd like to Move approval of Article 36, and I have one question that if it's a big, long, detailed answer, then I'll just follow up on tomorrow. But um, just looking at the figures for the FY24 budget versus accurate, um, actual, and then FY25 budget, especially on single and multi-space meters, um, is that off? Why is that off so much? Is it because of the meters being down so much? Is it just a crazy estimate? Although, when I look at the FY24 budget and 25, they're close, but that's because the uh, pay by phone and that crazy interest comes into play. But I'm just wondering where that is, and, and I guess we're going to adjust for that in the future. Yeah, I, I would say you've just hit upon what is the major discrepancy, and that is the manner of accounting. So, you know, in the proposed FY24 budget, there was NA in pay by phone, but obviously, pay by phone is becoming in, an increasingly popular way to make use of our meters. And that is a, you know, it comes in as a separate transaction, so we're going to account for it separately, but there are funds within that line that could apply to both single space and multi-space meters, but for accounting purposes, it will be easier for us to track it as its own source. So that's what's skewing the actual FY24 numbers uh, lower within the actual collections, and we are modeling our FY25 proposed budget off the FY24 actual, not the FY24 proposed. So if that's an anomaly, we probably won't see that. We'll see something, but not to that extent. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Feeney, oh, Mr. It, McGee. Uh, and, and if I could just yeah. allude to the, you know, as Mr. McGee touched upon, you know, believe it or not, this summer when we were not technically collecting at our meters, they, there were still a number that were functioning and were collecting some revenue. But for the first two months of this fiscal year, we were not collecting the full amount of what we would expect. So you may notice that in the big picture, FY25 is a very modest increase over fiscal year 24. And I think we're conservatively looking to fiscal year 25 to be our new benchmark year for what uh, a full year of collections looks like uh, in a post-pandemic world. Thank you. Of course. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll the second Mrs. Mahan's motion and a couple of comments or, and questions. And given the decline in revenue because the meters were down, do you see um, expenditures being greater than the revenues for fiscal 24 and, and perhaps having to tap into the, uh, the fund balance? Uh, what I would say is, you know, based on the revenues uh, for fiscal year 24 to date, we are you know, hovering at around 75%, yet we still have a significant portion, and it is a busier portion of the fiscal year for parking. So, you know, I'm actually feeling confident that we're likely to uh, hit our revenue figures, given that, you know, the first few months were not full 
uh, collection months. Right. And I'll also note that some of our expenditure line in FY24, we're still carrying uh, some money that was encumbered from FY23. So it never closed to fund a balance. So that money was tied to a project that was be began in FY23 and is still being expended now. So uh, I think that we'll be okay on the expenditure side as well. Okay, great. Thank you. And just uh, I have to ask this question for Peggy Metropolis. She brings it <laughs> up a lot on the trash management line. I see there's money that hasn't been expended. I think in talking to Mr. Feeney, there was still a plan to buy some the, um, the big belly barrels for the far side of the Broadway Plaza near the fire station. Are those still on back order or, or in but planning? We did receive yet another batch, and you, you can start to see them in Arlington Center, but we still do have a few more forthcoming for some additional locations. Okay. And, and just a comment on the pay-by-phone on the app. I mean, it's remarkable how much people are using that hasn't been in that long, and you, you're really going to see that take off, I think, in the future, which is great. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? Mr. Dickens. I'll just say that in melodramatic fashion, Ms. Mahan asked all my questions, you know, so I'm all set here, you know, and, and, and also I'm happy to see the, the seasonal decorations go up uh, by roughly 25K. I mean, I, I know one entity that's going to be happy with that, so thank you. Okay, um, let's do uh, the public comment portion of this article. So uh, this being a public hearing for Article 36, there uh, we have uh, Mr. Slickman on Zoom who wishes to comment on Article 36. So bring him into the as a panelist momentarily. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, members of the board. Uh, just as uh, somebody who lives across the street from Russell Common, uh, I'm uh, uh, encouraged to hear that you're going to look to do something about the medians within those parking lots, because right now they're looking kind of sad, and any improvement would certainly be merited. Thank you. Thank you, sir. My Zoom is down, so I'll rely on Ms. Marr to, uh, to tell me if there's any other people uh, for public comment. Mr. Morgan, come in. Oh, uh, Mr. McGee, we have a oh, member here. Sorry. <laughs> Welcome, sir. Just uh, introduce yourself and uh, give us uh, your Steve comment. Moore, Piedmont Street. Um, I don't know if this question is appropriate at this time. It, it may not be, but my question when you brought up the meters and the fact uh, you're talking about, you know, pay by phone and that sort of thing, I know that uh, we now, I believe, have a full deployment of the new style of meters. Um, and I'm wondering, are they owned by the town or leased? Sure, we can go there. Mr. Uh, we own the meters. Okay. Well, that's... My, my next point was going to be, if we lease the meters, could we please do something about making them more visible in bright sunlight? They're impossible to read. And I don't understand how that missed, when the design was picked, how that was missed. Because I have a very hard time making them out when the sun is full bright. That's all. Thank you. Thank you for that very much for the comment. Appreciate the feedback. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Any uh, further comment from the public in the room or on Zoom? Ms. Moore? Seeing no hands raised. Okay. All right. Let's uh, see. So we have a motion uh, for positive action by Mrs. Mahan. Second by Mr. DeCourcy. Ms. Moore. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. Helmuth. Yes. Four zero vote. Very good. Thank you, Mr. McGee. That brings us to Article 66, a resolution for MBTA service. We can bring uh, Mr. Schlickman back in, I think, as the proponent for this. Mr. Schlickman and friend. <laughs> It's nice to be back. Please go ahead, sir. Good. Okay, thank you. Uh, as you are aware, we passed a similar resolution last year. Uh, but I think that the things have not improved. In fact, things have gotten worse. And I think it's worth uh, voting the resolution again. Um, I certainly would be very happy if it went through on the consent agenda, because I think it's more important that the resolution gets passed and spread to state leadership uh than to have any kind of an extended debate in town meeting because i think the 
uh, residents and taxpayers of the town of Arlington would be grateful to know that town meeting uh, is aware of the issues with transit in Arlington and are looking to uh, involve the state uh, in the MBTA in terms of solving the problems. Uh, that said, since uh, the resolution last year, a couple of things have changed. So I've refreshed last year's resolution with a couple of additional points. One is that on January 29th, the Arlington School Department began running a parallel yellow school bus service in the mornings because the service for our students going to Odyssey Middle School uh, became so bad and we had such a critical issue with uh, tardy students uh, because the buses weren't coming. And that's just a, a representation of a further deterioration of, of the service in town with the loss of the 79 and the significant reduction in the service of the 77. Uh, it's been a real problem for us to get our kids to school in time. Uh, also, uh, last year on October 25th, uh, town meeting voted 189 to 35 to approve the uh, transit oriented housing uh, uh, zoning changes uh, consistent with the MBTA Communities Act. And I think that Arlington has been a leader in this. We pass this by a four to one margin. We fully support as a town uh, the, uh, uh, the housing obligations that we have being close to the city and trying to become a transit friendly, uh, transit oriented community. But we can't do that without the transit. And thirdly, I think that uh, we have new leadership, both in terms of the Secretary of Transportation and the MBTA general manager. And I think it behooves us to ask that they come and talk to us. Uh, they've been very responsive to other communities. They haven't been here. We haven't asked them to be here. We should ask them to come here and, and uh, uh, address some of the issues that we're having. So that's the resolution. Uh, hopefully, we'll get a positive vote from the Board of Selectmen recommending the town meeting adopts this. We can get it through in a uh, consent agenda, and we can all have apple pie afterwards. Select Board. Thank you, Select Mr. Board. Selectman. Right, I, I, I've, I've been doing this too long. I'm sorry. Let's, uh, let's turn to the uh, public comment uh, for the hearing uh, for this resolution. So uh, we have uh, Mr. Ouster raising and uh, Ms. Gruber. We can bring them in. Raise your hand in Zoom if you wish to comment on this article. And let's start with Mr. Oster. Good evening. Uh, go ahead, Adam. You can un unmute yourself. Oh, I I didn't. I missed some oh, sound you, when it you, was switching yes, I over. Say that you um, being enabled uh, yeah. So I, I also think it's important to say this every chance we get, and it feels a little bit like the definition of insanity because nothing happens and nothing happens and nothing happens. But I believe that someday something happens, and we should be there uh, by doing this kind of stuff um, uh, when that when that day comes. Um, I also want to remind the board that the T's uh, new improved bus plan, which is not what we've got yet, but the thing that they're aiming for, uh, will cut uh, Arlington service to the red line by 20% compared to uh, what used to be scheduled. And that it's actually worse than that because within those cuts is a 60% cut uh, to the alewife service. Um, the board may uh, recall that it received a report detailing these cuts uh, a year ago and referred that to the town manager. And I, I just bring that up because I, it's, we all know we have crappy service, but we also have the receipts and it can be useful in whatever conversations we might have in the future. Um, that report, by the way, is in the correspondence received for February 6th of last year, if anyone wants to retrieve it easily. And I, the only thing I'd say about the resolution, maybe making it a little better, is I think it should, uh, along with calling for all of the, you know, better service down Mass Ave, it should expressly call for uh, improved service to Alewife. Um, and uh, 
Uh, I hope it all goes the way that uh, that Paul says it will. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Gruber, good evening. Yes, uh, thank you for letting me speak and thank you to Mr. Schlickman for bringing this resolution to town meeting. Um, as a, a member of the MBTA community's working board, um, but speaking for myself, and not being so audacious as to suggest that the state has any uh, responsibility for a quid pro quo, we did put together a plan that was intended to take advantage of new housing in transit oriented areas of the town. And I certainly hope that the state is planning on providing the necessary public transit that uh, we are uh, counting on housing development being able to take advantage of. So I support this resolution wholeheartedly. And again, I wanna thank Mr. Slickman for bringing it to the town meeting. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do we have any further comment from the public uh, in Zoom or in the room on Article 66? Ms. Marr? Seeing no hands raised. Okay. Um, and I'll turn to the board um, and just just with a, um, a request for my colleagues that uh, tonight's vote so that uh, particularly with our questions about a quorum and, and uh, here, um, I didn't want to recuse myself from this discussion in case that we would, would uh, Zoom would fail and we would lack a quorum. Um, so um, to keep this clean just for my own potential conflict of interest, if we, I think it's fine if we move favorable action, but but specifically um, postpone the specific language of that resolution to, a, to the to traditional votes and comments. Uh, that would be my suggestion. Anyway, uh, Mr. DeCourcy. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Can, can you just repeat that again if, if we're going to move uh, yeah, uh, not the final language? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think, I, I think that with my situation, um, I, I don't have a conflict. We move favorable action generally, um, depending on the specific content of the, final, of, of the resolution, which we would do under votes and comments later. Um, I'm, you know, I may or may not have to recuse myself at that time, but we don't you know, know what that is yet. Okay, thank, th th thank you. And thank you, Mr. Schlickman, for uh, bringing this forward again. I note that last year it was Article 66 as well, so coincidentally yeah. it's going to have the same number. I, I, I you know, agree with the, the issues in terms of the, the service and, and speaking out on this. I think the resolution um, for me as a, as a member of the select board, there, there's some language in here that if I were to do it, I might change or take it out and specifically I'm not sure I would pinpoint the, the, the city of Quincy in, in, in my resolution. I think that the real issue here is that the 14 communities that were the part of the Metropolitan Transit Authority back in 1947 pay 82% of the assessment. I don't think there's one of those 14 communities. Quincy wasn't. And, and so there are issues that we have in common with, with some other communities, Boston, Cambridge, and Brookline pay the highest assessment. Um, we're, it, it's all based on population and it's a, by a factor of nine for the remaining 14 communities. And then when the MBTA was created in 1964, there were additional communities added. Those communities don't pay as much. I think that's an area that's certainly worth exploring with, with other, others of the 14 communities. I would be a little reluctant just to target Quincy in this in this resolution, I realize what they're served by and, and um, the, the, the number of stations. And, and so while personally I don't have a problem with this and for purposes of moving forward, I, 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 I think I would be inclined to move favorable action. I'm not doing it yet, but I also think it raises a larger question when you have a resolution before town meeting and this clearly affects Arlington. And it, it just feels like this type of thing should go right to town meeting because um, unless we're gonna wordsmith it, and I don't really wanna take, change Mr. Schlickman's words around, I think there's you know, maybe something to be explored with the moderator where there is something that's you know, related to Arlington. Is there a way to just get it before town meeting so that if we make changes and Mr. Schlickman wants to bring a substitute motion, he doesn't have to. And I, I, I think this is the only resolution this year. Maybe it's a good opportunity to talk to the moderator to see when something like this is put before the body, do you really need the select board to weigh in? I mean, you know, we may want to do it individually. And again, certain things I, I might change. I wholeheartedly agree we have issues. We'd like to work more with the MBTA. 
and there's broader issues in terms of the assessment that I think we can work through or attempt to work through uh, with some of our, our neighboring communities. So uh, just really a comment on that, but I thank you for, for bringing this forward. My colleagues? I feel like I'm jumping in front of Lynn all the time. Um, Mrs. Mahan. Um, I wholeheartedly agree with Mr. DeCourcy's remarks. Um, uh, regarding resolutions um, and not not to be sarcastic I know this is the second year I'm assuming we're not going to see this every year um, because I think it might t take away from uh, the message it's trying to convey but the other thing is as I said before with not uh, going a special town meeting wrote on the MBTA assessment um, w when I'm when I was reading this language in light of the remarks that I want to make under new business and conversations that I've had and various members of the select board have had um, regarding the MBTA assessment, which um, we pay more than Milton, I believe we pay more than Braintree, uh, and besides just Quincy, um, we pretty much pay more than anybody else. And um, I think my remarks that I want to say of steps moving forward on perhaps addressing the MBTA assessment, which I would say in a new business, I don't think it falls under this. Um, but m m the reason I'm, I'd, I'd like to bring it up and then um, say what my concern is, but um, I'm, I'm fine with a resolution going uh, before town meeting. I agree in terms of, you know, maybe we need to streamline the process um, uh, in this, you know, the board has a resolution they want to, just so that there's not an extra stop along Paul's trailway, railway, um, for resolutions and, and others moving forward. So yeah. Um, <laughs> but, uh, it, it, and again, it's a resolution, so I'm not going to, you know, stand on the top of the hill and say I'm going to uh, fight this to the whatever. Um, but I, I do think there are, a step or steps regarding our MBTA assessment that we'll have future discussions on. Um, in this resolution, I, I don't think, unless somebody took it word for, unless the MBTA took it to heart word for word, and I just don't see that happening. So um, I guess, um, is there no motion right now? Uh, that's for no motion. There's no motion, okay. Um, I'd be interested in Mr. Diggins. I feel like I'm always taking away <laughs> well, it's fine. It's fine. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to last. I mean, I'm happy to say last. You know, and 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 certainly, I, I just want to make it easier on the chair since me. You know, I am remote. You know, uh, a, well, you all know my posture towards me. You know, resolutions in general. I mean, I kind of said that if there were going to be a bunch of them, I mean, like my high water point was going to be abstain. You know, uh, I think partly it's because the BLM. In resolution just left a bad taste in my mouth because I think, to a large extent, <laughs> these these resolutions can be crafted in a way that doesn't disservice I me mean, to town meeting. I mean, it almost dares town meeting not to have a nuanced I mean um, re discourse. I mean, first off, you only get seven minutes on both sides, I mean, so it's really hard to have a meaningful discourse. And so, I me, mean, who wants to vote against apple pie? Uh, uh, look, I mean, the T is doing all it can to make service better. I mean, uh, for everyone, I mean, uh, I mean, if you look at the the board of directors, either the meetings or the slide decks, I mean, you'll see you know, the great efforts that are being made and strides that are being made. I mean, it's in a tough position. It's been, and it's, it's it's yeah, it's gotten into a really tough position. It's going to take it a while to work its way out of it, but but making making good progress. I mean, uh, uh, and so if we could do this resolution year after year, and one of these years it's going to sink up. Me with me, the tea coming out of it, and then we'll be able to say, "Oh, the resolutions did it." You know, but it really would have been more of a correlation than uh, a causation. You know, uh, with respect to the assessments, be Mr. DeCourcy laid out the the the, um, the problem very well. You know, for a while I was under the strong impression that when Fall River um, came online, uh, we were going the the, the South Coast. Um, expansion of the commuter rail uh, that we would that the T would then take on the uh, um, uh, the reassessments because we'd have more communities being um, being serviced by the MTA. When I talked to Senator Crichton, uh, the one of the co-chairs of the transportation, um, the Joint Transportation Committee, made about a year 
ago. I mean, he was not aware of anything being uh, with respect to happening with, with respect to assessments. I've kind of touched on the topic a little bit with the executive director of the MBTA um, um, advisory board. That is someone also that would suggest that we have come to meet with us. You know, we tried to get the chair of that body to meet with us. He tried twice. There was a, an illness in one case and a death in another case. Maybe we could try with him again, but Brian Kane, the executive director, is, is, I think, more easily available. I think he could give us some guidance as to me how to potentially move the assessments issue. I will add to that, though, that the governor has set up a uh, transportation funding task force, me, and, and that's for statewide, and I think that would be a good place you know, to have the discussion about uh, assessments in general and other ways made of uh, funding transportation and and transit. It, uh, so, so, um, so it, um, it, it, I'll just offer because I am going to vote. I, mean, I, I would like to. I, I, let's go with Mr. Corsi. He's like maybe we can just bypass the like, board completely on this and maybe on resolutions in general uh, because I mean, uh, at most you're going to abstain uh, um, for me on this. I mean, uh, but I will offer you this in all earnestness be that I will be happy to work with you to um, have people talk with us be it, uh, in large groups or small groups. Be it, uh, I'll be happy to answer uh, any questions you have be it, regarding any be it, like be it, future endeavors be it, to make be it, uh, the, the, the tea better. Uh, uh, and I'll leave you with this be it, and that kind of concerns the 79 to a certain extent. 79 be it, it's very unlikely that is coming back, especially when you take into account I mean, that one of the big initiatives now that the T is taking is to provide um, half fares for low income riders. I mean, and that's going to cost the T probably about 30 down to $50 million in about five years. I mean, uh, and and, and I mean, chances are, I mean, low, low ridership I mean, um, um, routes, I mean, like the 79, I mean, um, just aren't going to come back. The resources can be shifted uh, to towards that, you know, and I guess I did say one thing. I'll just throw in another point, too, about the the, the, the school buses. I mean, I don't know who ever thought it was a good idea, I me mean, to take out school buses, I me mean, and use public transit um, instead. I mean, I, I can appreciate that maybe I mean, schools were stretched, I me mean, to provide, I me mean, uh, transportation, I me mean, and that was a way of shifting, I me mean, that that financial load onto public transit, but you're taking the rush hour period and then you're putting this spike rush on top of it. There's just no way you can provide the capacity, you know, to do that. You know, I can think of other ways to do it, you know, but I wouldn't put it on, on public transit you know, alone. I mean, it's just asking for trouble and we got trouble. I mean, that's it. Thanks. Mr. DeCorsi. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, and just you know, there's a history here, Mr. Diggins, when that the MBTA actually used to provide special school bus services to the town of Arlington. And um, again, I'm dating myself. You, you, you learned today what year I was born. Now I was going to high school in the late 70s, early 80s. And, and the Almont bus, I lived up at the Heights. The MBTA used to provide a dedicated school bus to the town of Arlington. They did it at the Audison and they did it at the high school when Mrs. Mahan and I were at the at the high school and then Proposition Two and a Half came along. So, and again, we're not going back to those days, but, but there was a long history in our community for the, for the T recognizing, okay, we're not gonna fill up the 77 bus with students as it goes up and down Mass Ave. We'll provide a bus at 210 from Arlington High School. There was a period where the Audison, they provided a dedicated bus. So that, that, that was a history, and it's a long, long time ago, but it, it, it's, it's um, you know, Things were different back then, but I, I, I want to go back to the to the assessments, and I, I really we had um, Mr. Jameson in recently. We've heard from Mr. Tosti, Mrs. Mahan has spoken about it uh, over the years, and I think we're going to hear from her again tonight. And and again, just a little history lesson that it, the Boston Elevated Railway became the Metropolitan Transit Authority in 1947. We happened to be one of 14 communities based on service that was in place in 1947 in those communities, that has dictated the percentage that we pay on our assessment. And look, look how the T has changed since 1947 and in, in 1964 and, and, and throughout the years. 
we pay a multiple of, of many other communities. And when you look at the MBTA Enabling Act, which is Chapter 161A, there are still 14 communities defined. Those 14 communities are the original MTA communities. There's another 51 communities that are identified um, and then beyond that to get up to 178 or 175, whatever it is, there's other served communities. And with the assessment, while we're only, we're, we're talking eight to 10% of the T's budget, I think the total assessments to local communities is 193 million. Boston pays half of that. Our share for next year will be about 2% of that. That to me is a real discussion that should be had about, you know, may have been fine in 1948 to pay a higher percentage, but the, the service to Arlington relative to other communities, and there's other communities that are similarly situated too, that should be a discussion for the legislature to take a look, how, how is this being allocated? And that's why I mentioned my concern. I wouldn't, as I said earlier, I wouldn't point directly at Quincy. I, I, I'd point at the definition of the, of the communities and, and I'd like an opportunity maybe to talk to Mr. Schlickman um, after the meeting, between meetings, maybe to suggest some changes with that, with that paragraph, because I think there's a way to maybe add a little bit more there that, that, that points to the, the, uh, what I would consider the unfairness to the 14 communities uh, as part of the overall discussion. Thank you. So at this point, I note that we don't have a uh, motion on the table. Uh, I know Mr. Slickman has his hand raised, but I'll check to see if my uh, colleagues want to go now before we get back to Mr. Slickman. So, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll make a motion for uh, favorable action and to kind of jump on the history bandwagon and then M Mr. Schlickman, um, I think it was, I know it was after Proposition two and a half. I think it was 1999. I think there were about 78 other communities that were coming into the T at the time. Um, it's pretty well known anecdotal mm -hmm. history in the State House that um, the person, Senator who represented Milton Quincy in Braintree um, had a position of uh, authority in uh, setting the assessments. And basically it's been pretty well known for 20 plus years that, you know, uh, in my opinion, from what I've been told, Arlington really is carrying as, as a, because of what came out of the State House in that particular uh, person who was chairing the, the process at the time, we're really paying m a good amount of Milton, Braintree, and Quincy's uh, portion. And I, I think, and I'll just again discuss it under new business, um, there's a way, I think there are ways to address that, um, but I certainly think that, um, there's a way that um, this board is, has been sort of uh, discussing uh, a little more uh, diligently or uh, with a little more earnesty over the past two to three years. Um, and I, I'm fine to uh, move approval uh, on this resolution. I'll stop there. Thank you, thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Just to clarify, is your motion just to move uh, approval of putting the resolution before town meeting but with, with content to be voted later by the board? Yes, and I would, um, uh, I know Mr. Schlickman has his hand raised. Yeah, I, I would um, in, encourage, especially on that Quincy, I agree with that too. Um, I don't know if that gets reworked um, or whatever, but I know I would do something to it. <laughs> but anyways, so I would encourage and hope that Mr. Schlickman and Mr. DeCourcy have the opportunity to speak about that, and I'll just give my thoughts offline at another time to Mr. DeCourcy about that. Thank good. you. So just general move approval, oh, good. not yeah. specific yeah. language. Thank you. Thank you. Final I appreciate vote. that. Uh, further comments, Mr. Slickman? Uh, yeah, first of all, um, the purpose of the Quincy paragraph is a discussion of equity uh, and that I think that Arlington really deserves the opportunity to, ha to get what it pays for. Uh, I'm not as concerned with the amount we're paying, but for the getting our money's worth and getting the subsequent value relative to what, what, what we're contributing. And, and that's sort of the point. And I'm very happy to work with Mr. DeCourcy to come up with some language that, that the board would be more comfortable with. Uh, Quincy's just a, an easy example because they're a bigger city with uh, 
a much larger population and considerably more service and they're uh, assessed at a lower rate because that's just the most vivid and vis visible uh, example I can come up with. And the assessment rates are uh, in state law, so it's a matter of calculation, calculate the number of uh, people uh, in, in a municipality and multiply that by a given factor and then uh, assess that by the uh, assessment rate, which keeps going up. Um, now, as for the student transportation, uh, this has been a, uh, a mission of the MBTA since it came to be. And uh, first of all, Massachusetts law does not require districts, school districts to provide transportation for grades seven through 12, unless you're in a regional district. Um, and students in Lowell have T passes from the Lowell Regional Transportation Authority and the buses line up at the high school and work their way out from, from there at the end of the school day. Every student in Boston who is transported has a T-Pass, and everybody who has a T-Pass buys the T-Pass, and our students are buying a T-Pass to use the MBTA, and this is what has gone on historically since the MBTA came into business. Um, this is just an element of the MBTA failing to meet their responsibilities uh, that, that has been a traditional purpose for them to provide services to us as well as students throughout the region. Uh, that's why we view it as an issue that the MBTA has turned their back on something that we've relied upon them to do for generations and that dumping the problem in our laps where we've got parents who are so angry that their kids aren't coming to school in town that in, and that we can't get the MBTA to respond. Um, th this is the issue why we ended up instituting a bus with, uh, with user fees. And it's, it's troublesome for us. We, we don't have the bus infrastructure to go and run a parallel bus service. Uh, MBTA has made a commitment a long time ago to be a partner with the school districts within the MBTA service area and they should be held accountable. Uh, I am very grateful to the board for uh, supporting this effort. I hope we're not back here next year. I hope that we have um, a communication with the leadership of the MBTA and the State Department of Transportation. I'm more optimistic this year than last year. Uh, but uh, I, think, I think some element of success would be for us to all work together to bring the tea into town, to make us more of a priority rather than just turning our hands up and saying, well, what are we going to do? The tea's got problems. Uh, we'll let them solve their problems, and then we'll think about what happens in Arlington. If, if Arlington does not advocate for Arlington, nobody's going to advocate for Arlington. And right now, anytime I've seen any discussion in the MBTA over the past couple of years, I have not seen once the, uh, uh, the town of Arlington come, uh, even mentioned. And I, I think we need to change that. I, I really do. Thank you, sir. Um, so at the moment, we have a motion. We do not have a second. So I'll, I'll second uh, Mrs. Mrs. Mahan's motion. OK. Okay, further discussion? Oh. Well, I, I don't agree with much of what Mr. Fitchman said, but the way it was put makes me feel that it's not really worth arguing at this point. But all I'll say is that me, I am willing to work me you know, to try to me reach out to folks that I think could be helpful in at least me you know, getting some answers you know, and maybe even moving things a little forward with respect to assessments. Me, but I will not be supporting the motion. Thank you very much. All right, so we have, um, I guess I'll, I'll, I've been moving along and, and not making my own comments, which is fine. Um, but I do want to say I have, I have great sympathy for the, for the um, motivation and sentiments you know, be, behind, the motion, be behind the motion. I think that um, I'm intrigued by Mr. DeCourcy's suggestion that as, as a potential new precedent and something worth exploring with the moderator and with town council after, uh, outside of this meeting, would be, you know, resolutions to me are um, the voice of town meeting speaking. And, you know, I feel, although the, the board does have a responsibility uh, to, to issue advice to town meeting about what we think they should do, that's the whole point of a recommended vote. 
I think that that's, it's different when it's a non-binding resolution that's really intended to take, to be a, 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 a corporate expression of opinion by town meeting. And it feels, it always felt a little bit disproportionate to me that, in, in, that the select board would be asked to do this. And as Mr. Corsi pointed out, that, that creates uh, some, some procedural bottlenecks if uh, the proponent quite justifiably doesn't like how we monkey with their resolution, then they have to go to the trouble of doing a substitute, and that implies a conflict that's just not usually there. It's really more of a question of role. And, and so I think that'll be an interesting question, and Mr. Corsi, I would welcome you uh, to take that up with, with um, the moderator, Attorney Cunningham, and, uh, at your leisure to uh, maybe provide guidance uh, back to the board when we take this up for final votes and comments. Would you like me to do that before the end of April, Mr. Chair? I think that would be an uh, <laughs> excellent idea, actually, yes. <laughs> uh, e even, even, even more so before we, uh, this comes back <laughs> to us for final votes. <laughs> so soon would be great. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Attorney Cunningham. Like he's, uh... Yeah, uh, I think our, our town council is uh, frozen in Zoom at the moment. I just well said, Mr. Chair, and I just want to stress that I'm happy to. Sorry, Mr. Chair, am I on now? Yes. I just want to say it's very obviously well said, Mr. Chair, but I'm happy to follow up with the moderator and the board regarding possible ways forward on the issue of resolutions. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's go back to my notes here. So we have a, a motion for general favorable action with uh, content of the resolution to be voted later by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. DeCourcy. Ms. Marr. Mr. Diggins. No. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. Helmuth. Yes. It's a 3-1 vote. Thank you very much. Okay, that ends the Warren article hearings. Brings us to item 15, uh, correspondence received. We have an informational memo. Uh, this suggests no action, but informs the board uh, of the, of the uh, work that the town proposes to undertake in response to the Broadway crosswalk request. And that is from John Alessi, Senior Transportation Planner. I'll move, uh, turn to the board. Um. Move, re move receipt, and I want to thank our senior transportation planner, Mr. Alessi, um, for his uh, memo to us that um, right now there is no immediate action to be taken on this, but that's because, as he points out, there uh, are conversations and considerations and recommendations being formulated for the um, streetscape improvements which are planned later this year and he um, has indicated that that's where uh, this and other intersections um, along Broadway, Sunny, all the way down to Sunnyside, North Union Street um, will be addressed. So while it's initially it seems no action, it's not because we're already, we already have an action and something's about to come out to address that. So yeah. long way of saying move or see. You know, thank you for that elaboration. I think that's, that's uh, Good service to the public there. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Further discussion, I should say. Okay, so we have a motion receipt by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. DeCourcy. Ms. Marr? Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Four zero vote. Thank you very much. That brings us to new business. Except in cases of emergency, the board will neither deliberate nor act upon topics presented in new business. And with that, we will turn to Ms. Marr. No new business, thank you. Attorney Cunningham. One piece of new business, Mr. Chair. Um, excited to announce that we have found and offered and retained a new deputy town council for the town of Arlington. Uh, Jacqueline Munson uh, was a very, we're very excited to have, have uh, Attorney Munson come on board. Most recently served as, as Corporation Counsel for the City of Boston. Uh, very, very distinguished attorney and very qualified. And we're very excited to that uh, Attorney Munson will be joining the town probably sometime in mid-March. Uh, and special thanks to uh, Human Resources Director Karen Malloy and her staff for really, um, you know, conducting this search. We had some excellent candidates in the end. Um, and it was a difficult choice, but Attorney Munson uh, is a real standout. We're happy to have, have have Jacqueline join us. Excellent news. Thank you, sir. Mr. Feeney. Uh, no new business. 
Ms. Mahan. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, regarding um, Mr. Jameson was here at our last meeting, and I know we, we've been having conversations, some of us ad infinitum, all the way back to uh, Mr. DeCourcy's Finance Committee days regarding the assessment. Um, I uh, have had conversations with the town manager and town council as recently as today, including, God bless you, you're on vacation, Attorney Cunningham, but uh, I've still been bothering you about where Mr. Jamison uh, correctly pointed out that there's another new factor um, under the MBTA Communities Act that uh, Communities Overlay District Act that Arlington is now officially labeled as an adjacent community, whereas Milton, Quincy, Braintree, or Commuter Rail, or Rail Trail, the CTRT. And we're just uh, adjacent community with bus service that has been, um, they don't point out this point, but drastically cut. Um, as well as uh, limited, and, and, uh, and Mr. Jameson did ask us to look into the possibility of either putting something in the uh, regular town meeting or s special town meeting, but after conversations, um, uh, as the town manager pointed out that the formula is codified by state law under a statute that, um, of course, the board could put something in a warrant, but it really um, would, would not be the correct route or the direct route um, to address this. And I did have conversations last year with um, Rep Representative Garbley about, since it is a state s statute that governs the assessment. And I understand there's a formula, but there's something wrong with the formula. There's, there's still that state house. Everybody knows it and nobody really says it publicly. I mean. I'll pick on the city of Quincy just because Mr. Schlickman has pointed it out. If you go by, oh, there's a formula, we're stuck to it. Well, Arlington has approximately 42,844 residents as of uh, t July 2022. Quincy has 102,897 residents, and we pay a million plus more than them. So there's, yes, there's a formula, and there's a factor of nine, and I'm not saying this to Mr. DeCourcy, but there's also tweaking that started at the beginning that, in my opinion, really, pardon my language, my dad will get mad at me, but I know he's asleep, so he's not watching, really stuck at the Arlington. And, it, you know, it, it, to me, it's gone on long enough since 1999. It's time to change that. And one of the ways um, to change that, and I'm not saying there aren't other ways, but um, last year, uh, Representative Gobley and his, and his staff, his office looked into I asked him to look into the state sat statute, and governed in that state sat statute is language that the MBTA assessments are supposed to, every July, go through an automatic reassessment, which hasn't really happened. Um, and so one of the ways that he suggested last year, and the town manager and town council, because um, I don't want to waste anybody's time, including all of our time in the manager and others, but um, uh, I've asked them to look into formally taking that step. I believe it's through the legislative delegation. I'm not asking us to discuss it here tonight because that would be a future agenda uh, item or, or something else, um, that we ask our le legislative delegation to, since it's in the statute, it's in state law, um, there's no way, you know, even if I think Arlington and our delegation said, okay, please do it by the, the, the formula that you have with the factor of nine, which is population, and then you're also supposed to add into um, what type of community you are, which we've now been officially an MBTA adjacent community. We're not even a CT or an RT. Um, that assessment should go down. So. Um, my hope is that since the state law statute says the reassessments are supposed to happen every July, um, I've asked the uh, town manager and town council to have conversations with the delegation to say this is the route we would like to go. Um, we'd like to, it has, you know, there really are no reassessments, but they're supposed to be. We're going to ask you to do that. Um, and or they recommend other ways for us to 
get the assessment. I don't, I don't want to just have a meeting where we meet with a titular head from the MBTA or the MBTA advisory community complain about this, because everybody knows this has been going on, and we just say it and nothing happens. I want something, as we all do, that, that has some teeth to it. So um, the town manager and town council are looking into to see if asking our legislative delegation and when that request when the request should come from this board and when the legislative delegation should actually file that request. I'm assuming it's, you know, at least a month, six weeks before uh, the fiscal year starts July 1st, which is what the state law says. And as well as um, perhaps when they're investigating that um, with uh, Senator Freeman, Representative Garberly, and Representative Rogers, there may be another uh, suggestion under the state statute, because I think that's the only way we can get any relief is to uh, MPTA, the law that was created under the state statute. Um, and at the very least, we, we somehow have to make the request, fine, then let's do it by the formula that's in there that goes by population in a factor of nine, which means we're pay gonna be paying less than Quincy, Milton, and Braintree, which we pay millions of dollars more than them. We'll be more in line with like Lexington, um, which pays about 829,000. So um, I just wanted to, and I know we've all had individual conversation, members of the boards um, with the manager and with town council. So I don't want anyone to think since I'm so wordy on this. And I, I think because I've been on the board longest than anybody here <laughs> since 1999. That's why I'm like, oh. I'm so, I'm so tired of hearing about this every year and how, how the uh, MBTA assessment is unfair to Arlington and, you know, all these other cities and we're a town, um, don't even come close to pay what we're paying. Um, but I, I feel confident that, you know, especially in light of the budget presentation given by our town manager, Mr. Feeney, and our deputy town manager, Mr. McGee, at the last meeting regarding Chapter 70, which I hope the news that we receive does get a little bit better, but um, there aren't really indication that that's going to happen, as, as you know, as well as other things, including living within the guidelines and the promises we made to the voters, um, who were gracious enough to um, once again open up their uh, wallets, pocketbooks, billfolds, whatever, um, and, and vote for the last override. So um, this is something we'll continue to address. So, and then the only other thing under new business, because we have to do blank and giggles every now and then. I've never noticed this before, um, but Michael Quinn posted to the Arlington List earlier this morning that, um, and I went and looked, and he is correct, that if you look at the warrant, it says right in the beginning in the preamble, and of course right now I can't find it, um, basically language saying, uh, uh, t town meeting's about to convene. Here is the warrant. Please notify and warn your inhabitants of the warrants contained therein. So I just point that out. I'm not trying to change that language, but I never noticed that. If you, if you, if you look at, you know, I went online, looked at our draft warrant, went in the very beginning, that very first paragraph before it, all the uh, warrant articles are laid out, it does say to notify and warn inhabitants of, um, so, and I thought that was kind of a cute historical little thing that's in there. That's it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. DeCourcy. Uh, no new business. <laughs> Mr. Diggins. Sorry. So, in, in the case of what Mrs. Mahan just said, <laughs> it is worth, I mean, with respect to the assessment, it is worth how many on, but I'm not going to because of OML. It, uh, uh, but, but I certainly look forward to following up on, 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 on some of the things that she just discussed. It, uh, uh, and, and, um, so my new business is that you know, uh, the, um, the TAC has formed a subcommittee to w look into the um, uh, kind of uniformity, making the um, speed limits uniform. You know, that we had sent that to the town manager, he sent it to TAC. And TAC is moving with, um, with um, great speed on this. I mean, we, we had a meeting last Thursday, we're gonna have another one um, this Thursday. Um, Jim Stubby, who we uh, promoted to full-time uh, or a full um, um, TAC member is just doing phenomenal work, you know, and, and it's a, uh, I'm, I'm, yeah, I mean, I'm enjoying it immensely, and I think we're going to be able to bring something back to the board probably within a month, you know, so 
So um, that's the new business and a little bit of a teaser. Thank you very much. Uh, I think we are through our agenda. And in this case, I will welcome my motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. On a motion to adjourn by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. DeCourcy. All in favor? No. It's a roll call. Mrs. Mahan. You're not my friend. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. Helmet. Got my hammer ready. <laughs> yes. The 4 0 vote. We are adjourned. Thank you very much. Bye bye, everybody. Take care. Good night.